Uh, according to the green bar, it's telling me that we're live. We're ready. We are set and good to begin, ladies and gentlemen, for another fun-filled, exciting week of the PokePod World Podcast. I hope the the tabs and Twitch things were actually updated to say 158. If it isn't, I'm going to be it set. Is. Oh, yeah, thank it is, God. It is. Okay, so uh, just to clarify, because certain times... Uh, the other bot, the Seri bot, would tend to be a little delayed when it comes to uh, showing the updated title. So oftentimes he would say, oh, we're doing Xenoblade on the Pokepod. And then it turns out, no, no, we're actually, we're, we're actually doing, doing the pod. This. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, at least that means it's good. So we're good. All right. Hi, everybody. How are you all doing tonight? Once again, my name is KG Prestige and welcome, everybody, to another exciting edition of, as you guys already know it, the Pokepod World Podcast, here with my two buddies for tonight. I got with me my buddy TSS, and I got me my other buddy Emmy. So say hello, you two. Hello. Hello, hello. Hey, at least there's no ice cream stain in the fucking car- couch this week. Yeah. <laughs> we got the cleaners. We, we were good boys this weekend, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God. Got out the cleaners. Oh, uh, yeah, we got the cleaners now. <laughs> well, I mean, well, well, I mean, you know... Uh, it's not. It's not very hard, you know, when Tyrone isn't here. Yeah. <laughs> we we probably should go and update that, shall we? So, to those who might yeah. have not followed us um, by any chance on our other streams and sessions, uh, but I believe he did mention it during the podcast last yes, week. Yes, he did. Uh, yeah, but yeah. to those who might have missed out on it at the beginning or at the end of the uh, session, Tyrone mentioned he will not be streaming for a couple of weeks. Uh, due weeks. to the fact that he is going to be making a big change in his life right now, and uh, he's going to be taking care of some responsibilities. So, because of that, he is going to be away for a couple of weeks. And then I believe after this, the following week, uh, Terrell will also kind of be going on that same boat as well, where he will be also going yeah. through a couple of weeks of a break as well. So, yeah. uh, for the most part, I feel you guys might get used to the three of us here more throughout these next couple of weeks. I, I mean, to be fair, I mean, to be fair, um, there was a decent amount of time where it was just uh, me, you, and Tyrone. So, I guess the three, the, the three, uh, I don't want to say the word just in case I get clipped out of context. The three people podcast. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to say the other word because I know people like to freaking clip shit out of context, and you know, I gotta watch what the fuck I say. Yeah, man, you gotta be careful. We live in an age of where we're gonna go oh. from three to four oh, oh, now. Four. Three to four. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, we should probably talk about the fourth member who just randomly showed up right now, and I wasn't Ooh. sure if you were actually going to show up, and so I didn't have your icon on stream. I know for um. For our other buddy, uh, <laughs> Nintendo Man says he's dating a horse girl. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! I mean, I mean that is responsibilities. I get, I guess, but we're, we're, you know, it's his life. That's what he wishes to do. It's, you know, we will, as good friends, support his horrible decisions. I feel. <laughs> All right, but hey, everyone, say hello to our other pal who joined us right now, Nessa. Hi. All right. Well, first off, Nessa, welcome to. It's good to have you here. I should say, welcome aboard, buddy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was always already a little late because I was like, I had to do some uh, last minute things, and then usually starting at this hour for me is actually difficult because it kind of stems into what I'm doing usually. Mm. Ah, okay. Well, first off, it's great to have you here. Oh, thank you. Uh, and also, it looks like my dog decided to come and say hello. Hello, buddy. Okay, you hello. can get going hey. now. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's Doggo! Yeah, it's it. Everyone mm-hmm. say hi to Yanny. That's her name. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh they need to call you right now. Yanny. You can go, Yanny. <laughs> no, no come back! <laughs> hi, Galler! Hey, Cosmic! Oh, she's just sitting down now over here. Aww. All right. Okay, never mind. She wants to stay here. It's fine. It's fine. Whoa, whoa. Yay! Okay, go be over here in the couch in the back, oh. okay? Yeah, we now give her to me. I have to hold Cosmic. <laughs> 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 you know what we'll do, Joe? Just to <laughs> Just to mimic it? Hold up a second. We're just going to mimic this. Let me let me get this real quick. Hold up. I'm going You're gonna to give me a dog? Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're gonna use the Zerua plush and we're gonna put it on you right there on top of you. There you go, right there. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh man, hi, Rex And then we'll, uh, oh my gosh. We'll move oh, Pikachu hi. over here for TSS. So there you go. Yeah, Pikachu, move. I got a doggo now. All right. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, before we actually Zoro get into tonight's now, Zoro shenanigans... is now a lap dog. I like that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Just don't shed, okay? Because otherwise we have to like clean the couch again. Uh, All right, thank no, you. No, don't worry. We got <laughs> those. We got or, those or rollers that'll her. clean it. <laughs> don't shit on her. <laughs> KG, you need a snubs plush, like the snubs or the snubs no. that's in the <laughs> snubs the, uh, or the, the snubs, snubs <laughs> that's in the TV right now that you see above us. Uh, oh, I love that so much. That's a nice oh. image. Yeah. So allow me to go and once again congratulate and thank. Uh, my good buddy Sergi Romero, aka Tabasco Balshi on Twitch, aka the goddamn goat when it comes to the art. As you guys already recall, uh, he made us an art piece a couple of weeks back, focusing on uh, the majority being the girls from the the podcast, and as well as our friend K underscore E X E. So this time around, I decided to put priority. On these three folks here that you see in the screen for today. So, in fact, let me go and transition to so we can get a better look at the said thing. Uh, it is focused on our friends from the various worlds of the Pokepod. We got our buddy Cosmic, who you might have recalled seeing in one of our past sessions, as well as actually uh, being in the chat currently right now. Cosmic Vengeance underscore. Uh, to our left over there, we got our pal Infamous Trainer. Uh, Jaleel, of course, a wonderful, wonderful friend of ours. And uh, I got permission from him because the thing is, the whole uh, premise behind this piece that you see tonight is main priority is for the Silver Wing Rank Cup, which is a tournament hosted by our friend Goggles, or Goggle Master, uh, which I believe will be occurring through the Master's Day, I think, starting next month. Hold on, I'll keep you guys up to date on that. Uh, so, the point is, yeah, so the whole premise behind this is in celebration for the Master's Day. All three that you see here currently, Infamous, Cosmic, and Tyrone, have made it in to the top eight. And so yeah. I hope everybody does their best to go and support their favorite content creators or their favorite opponents slash rivals they see in the battlefield. And uh, best of luck to these three, of course. I hope you guys enjoy the piece. Uh, as for why Ruby is here, well, apparently he was in charge of taking care of camera duty. Uh, he kind of is that. failing on that very miserably. But thankfully, his buddy Zerua is here to save the day. So we got, we got a homie <laughs> of some form yeah. to help us out in these <laughs> situations. So once again... Thank you to my buddy Sergi. Um, I will get back to you, Serge. If you're watch, if you're listening to this right now, I will get back to you uh, about some of the other things. Uh, but I don't know if any of you guys noticed, but there was like a, a surge out or like a disconnect that Discord went through a while ago. Wait, yeah. really? Wait, yeah. What? Discord was down for about an hour or two. Yeah, oh, I, mean, I mean, I mean, let's 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 go to the let's go to status.discord.app, which is you know discordapp.com, which is what it is. Uh, it, uh, there's no, uh, the, the last time that it went down, there was a partial outage of about four hours on July the 19th, not anything lately. Huh. I ah. swear to God, the Discord was down for like a while. Even people, mm. uh, if you go to Twitter, you could write Discord down and there were a couple of people who was responding saying, is Discord mm. down? And yeah, it was like for like a little small moment, like about an hour or so. Right. I believe. That must be, that must be, a, that must have been a problem with the, um, with a, like a, like, um, some ISP connections because, um, status.discordapp.com usually shows, um, any status problems with like the cloud services. So there probably wasn't anything wrong with the cloud, but it was probably maybe ISP ish related issues. Ah, that would make a lot more sense. Yeah, I yeah, because they don't they don't really yeah because they don't really report any of the um the outage the um, ISP related issues because well, uh things like you know companies like Spectrum like seems to go out like every five and a half seconds for some people. But yeah, I was gonna say like I haven't been having Discord issues, but I've been having internet issues because of the storm. So <laughs> rain, so much rain. <laughs> yeah, oh no, that's more rain. And, and and it sucks for people that got like Starlink. If you're not freaking throttled by now, but whatever. Mm. That is true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But mm. hey, don't no, don't worry on that, ladies and gents. We should be good now. I I hope. And uh, well, yeah, let's see how things will shape up later. Yeah. All right, but uh, so far though, everything's fine. We're good. We're safe. We're happy. Yeah. 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 On that. 
<laughs> hey, look who it is right it's there. Goggles. We were just talking about the lad. Goggles, our good buddy. Or, or as Emmy wrote, Googles. <laughs> Googles. <laughs> Google. uh, hey, yeah, Sergi, Sir, Sergi did an amazing job. And once again, Goggles, you also did an amazing job with hosting the tournament too. Uh, best of luck to those that are in your Masters 8 tournament right now. I and ruined I hope for everybody. And I, hope the machine that, and I hope the machine that you bought is actually working properly. Because Indeed. A lot of There's no shame, as you say, with buying a pre-built machine, bro. As yeah. I am an owner of a pre-built too myself, so... I mean, <laughs> yeah, and, and and says the guy who freaking used onboard graphics for two years and not knowing that he had a 1080 Ti. Hey, man, that just means I was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a skill issue. No, no, hashtag skill. No, I never issue. thought in my life I would get hit with the skill issue. I'm sorry, <laughs> chat. I failed, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy uh, but yeah it. once again I thank you it. sincerely thank you to uh to sergi for your amazing piece thank you to goggles for pretty much being the one responsible for making this piece even be a thing because it was your tournament that inspired this piece and mm -hmm. congratulations to our buddies infamous uh cosmic and tyrone who are part of the Masters 8, amongst many of our other allies that are also present there as well. Shoutouts to each and every single one of y'all. Uh, and Yay. best of luck to all eight members there. And uh, let's see who comes out on top. Who who are you guys rooting for? That's the real question. If you guys keep yes. up to date with the sil <laughs> if you guys keep up to date yeah. with the Silver Wing uh, Rank Cup, uh, you'll know who the eight opponents are, uh, which I will read for you guys right now. So here you go. So I believe from eighth to first, we're gonna go from bottom to top. Tyrone, Cosmic, Infamous, Jawsome twenty four. Uh, I believe it's Talent Flame or J Talent Flame. Uh, mm -hmm. Prince Ali. Mr. Flames and the Media Nut. Yeah, Media Nut, I heard, wow, like he is going insane in some of his stuff. So uh, let's see if he continues to hold on that first position spot or. It's will there... all or nothing. Uh, <laughs> it's a nerf or nothing at this point. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Goggles cannot wait to hear more about it. And of course, Goggles, if you know already, keep me up to date with that stuff. You know, I'll be around to help you out with your shenanigans, bro. Uh, so yeah. Mm. Uh, so let's continue on then into tonight's yeah. shenanigans because uh, as stated before by our friend uh, TSS and our other friends here in the chat as well, uh, there isn't necessarily a lot going on per se right now because obviously there is no new episode that had dropped today. However, uh, if you guys were a part of our community reaction night on Friday, you would know that we had hosted a film watch for Pokemon the Movie Heroes, Latias and Latios, uh, which I will not read the full Japanese title because Jesus Christ, that shit's long. But uh, the uh, most, I think it's like God Guardians of the uh, Sea or something like that. Or, yeah, I think it was something like that. All right, that. Because, because, title. because, okay, because I haven't, because I haven't done it. I haven't done this damn thing for a long freaking time. So I got to I got to freaking do that. They tie the, um, let me see here. I just want to make sure. Yes. So the the Japanese title is um uh Gekijo Ban Pocket Monster. Um Mizuno Miyako no Mamori Gami Latios to Latias. Or Latias to Latios. Or the guardi the or Pocket Monsters the theatrical presentation the Guardian Gods of war of the Water Capital Latias and Latios. Yeah. yeah, that's a big title. It's a long title. I think there was also <laughs> another variation. I think it was like the Guardians of Altomare or something like that. Yeah, Ultima that's it. Yeah, Altomare. And also, uh, big shout outs to PM Subs as well, because Yay. you guys were the ones who provided the, uh, the subbing for that film. Uh, because yeah. there was two things we were going to do with this film. Uh, initially, we were going to watch it the dubbed format. That, However, that. if you guys already know about the history of the dubbed format, you guys will know the big issue with that one. Uh, AKA blue. Uh, but the version we went was with uh, the PM version, the subbed version of the film, which to our that. surprise, holy shit, there was some additional content that we missed out on in the original release of the film. Oh, you guys said it yeah. now? 
No, there was no. Like about like six minutes or so content. I think yeah. I don't really remember how many, but like point of the matter is there was additional content in that release to where it caught us completely off card. And we're like, oh shit. Now I got yeah, a little bit more context behind some of the protagonists, antagonists, and uh, the legendary Pokemon of the city. Yeah, they re- they definitely rewrote the entire script for some reason. Because I remembered I actually used to own the Japanese version of that fifth movie. So then I remember seeing this movie before it came out in dub. And I kind of remember at the time I was like, oh, this movie is like movie is beautiful and everything. And I was kind of excited because this is like we're talking like early 2000s here. And I was excited like, oh, I, I got the Japanese version and that it was like not even uh, like even possible in America at the time. And so then I remember I loved that movie so much. But when the dub came out, I think this is like an 03, 04 or somewhere around. I was like, what the hell happened here? <laughs> I was like, why did it cut off this, like, the, the, st- part, like, what part of the, uh, story version in the beginning of the movie? I was like, why did yeah. they do that? Why did they make, um, Annie and Oakley, whatever their names are in the dub, or, like, made them, that they, they work for Team Rocket, and they're actually don't. They were, like, something, they were, like, pretty, they were just thieves. The, That's it. Yeah, yeah they're just thieves. Yeah. Independent, yeah. yeah. It was just, like, why? Like, I didn't quite understand, and it, it was just so confusing. Yeah, and so I and I remembered. I think the dub I wasn't that happy for, and also the coloring too was weird too in that movie. Um, uh, it's probably because of uh, the blue tint, which is mm-hmm. because it's because the um, the film was probably well. I think I think the Blu-rays also have the same thing because mm-hmm. uh, so for people that don't know, they are like color like specific color spaces that are that are calibrated. Um, normally displays are calibrated using uh, temperature. 6,500 Kelvin is the standard. However, mm-hmm. though, the, the what you call the blue tint is because the mastering was done in 9,300 Kelvin. Um, the higher the temperature, the more blue the image is. Mm-hmm. So that's pro- then that's why. Yeah, I kind of remember it was weird looking too when I saw the dubs. It was just like, I was like, what? And uh, let's not forget the most important thing about it too. It was cropped. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah, that was the other thing. That too, was the it, big the stinger white... that told me, no, we're not watching the dub no more. I know people have done this version where they took the audio and just slapped it in the uh, Japanese release of the film. Yeah, they call it they call it dub over raw. Yeah, that's, that's what they call but it. Yeah. I don't think that includes the first few minutes of the original no. sub release. So uh, that's why we went with the original version. And I'm gonna just say uh, we'll get to that more in the review portion for tonight for that film. But, oh, uh, it, 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 yeah, yeah, because ours. we watched it on Friday. Might as well do yeah, a review. Yeah. And the also the reason the issue the issue the issue with me is that I haven't watched that movie in like twelve years. Okay, to explain why we're doing it in the first place, you guys might know this in chat, uh, but in Japan, they've actually released three films uh, in theaters. I think there's one more that hasn't released yet as of right now, but I yeah. believe two films so far have been dropped, which I think was Movie 5, which is the one we saw, Movie oh, yeah. 6, and I think Movie 10, which is the Dark Ride yeah. film. Yeah, uh, Dark Ride. So those three films were initially released in theaters, so we thought... Why the heck not? Let's go have some fun. Let's watch one of the movies that got released in cinemas in Japan. And I'm like, let's go with the Latios and Latias film. And that's why we watched it on Friday. And we're going to give a little bit of a review on it uh, tonight in the later portion of the review, of course. Because we still got quite a couple of things we got to go and discuss before we actually jump into tonight's mm-hmm. topics. Because uh, mm-hmm. there is a lot, and I mean a lot of good things happening, a lot of controversial things happening uh and just many more in between and we'll do our best to cover them all uh in tonight's podcast session so i hope you guys sit back relax and enjoy the show so let's get right into it beginning things off let's go and talk about of course the main thing that went down this week uh the pokemon world championships held in london if i'm correct right yeah london yes so one of the coolest things about it is that of course we got a just beautiful theming going on over there they actually got to show off the uh the english dub release of the arceus special uh that was from journeys and they showed it through there and i think it's coming out later this year on netflix if i'm correct yeah and also they um they must have like some weird refresh they have some weird samsung oled panels or something because um some people that tried to record um, off of that um, were greeted with um, inverted colors. Yeah, they oh, said there was like a screen filter or something on it 
that causes the the images to not pop up properly when trying to take a picture or a video well, recording. Well, some people, of it. well, some people did get it. Did did were were able to take a picture of it like straight. But I think I think the problem is when you try to video record it, it was probably running at a weird refresh rate. The, the that your computer or your camera might not be adjusted to. I yeah, guess. yeah, because it's, it's kind of like the same. It's kind of like a, the same effect that you'd get uh, if you try to take a video of like a CRT television, except mm -hmm. it's far worse. Ah, yeah. Actually, that's smart of him to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. No, it's a way to prevent you know people from just yeah. taking Piracy. the film and then just Piracy, selling yeah. it exactly. <laughs> Although, as you talk about piracy, we got to talk about the biggest shit that's enabling piracy right now. And that's also with HBO Max and their shit, too. Uh, <laughs> honestly, it's making me want to cancel my HBO Max account because they took all the shit Damn. that I liked. Like, they Dang. took everything from it. Uh, yeah. Hell, Uncle Grandpa was stuff. trending for like two to three days because he was the only survivor, bro. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. There's a whole story behind that. We'll get to that soon. Um but we'll 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 cover that at a later point. Right now, we're gonna continue on talking about the uh, the Pokemon World, World Championship. Champions. So let's go and talk about some of the big things that got announced. I think the first thing we should talk about real quick because I know it's gonna probably be a uh, big one. Um, twenty twenty three next year, the location for where the next Pokemon Worlds will be taking place in, and the biggest shock to the whole world. Is that Vermilion City is actually real, guys? Would you believe yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> We're actually going to the old school 8 bit pixel world of Vermilion City, aka the wonderful world of Japan. Where in Japan specifically? Well, according to what I'm reading here, it's called Yokohama, Japan. And this is exciting because this brings a lot of questions up on the table. TSS, you are probably the person who has the most knowledge when it comes to this because of the yes. fact that you've flown to Japan many times before, but you also know more about the current situation happening right now regarding the pandemic and what's been holding people back. But now this kind of raises a lot more questions because this also makes us think, wait, so does that mean it's confirmed that by next year? there is finally going to be a drop when it comes to the uh, restrictions and now yeah. will it become yeah. more open and and there and herein lies my here's herein lies my problem so um this is this is kind of like the second the, the the second knock on the door because the first knock on the door was a few uh about a month ago it was announced that the G7 the G7 summit was going to be in uh, Japan it was going to be in Osaka and um, for next year and this is already the second major, uh, the second major meeting that's going to be held in Japan. And uh, Kishida Sori needs to get on his high horse and understand that okay, um, this thing with guided tours and limiting isn't going to work because don't uh, in here. And here is my advice: nobody, nobody from the Japanese government would listen to this. But I will say that. Um, if you're going to open up full blast last minute, that's not going to work because that's because what you want to do is you want to open it like uh, several months or a few months before the time to gauge where uh, what will happen in that scenario, because you don't want to end up being like, you know, Tokyo 2020 Olympics, you know, that yeah. disaster. You don't want it, you don't want that to happen. And also, considering that the Japanese economy is in fucking rough shape, you want they want to have the tourism back. And I'm sorry, but when you have 50 people from the United States in a uh, in a month on a tour and that's it, that's bad. And then they want to blame another and they want to blame the big country that that, oh, it's because the big country isn't coming in. No, that's not it. You just ought to open up because here's the thing: I could go to Singapore, I could go to, I could go to Indonesia, I could go to freaking Australia with no restrictions. I can't go to Japan. I can even go to South Korea. <laughs> Damn. And, Damn. And, and and it's like I could go, I could get an airplane tomorrow and not have to worry about it. Also, they have to re. Also. Um, they would have to re reinstate visa free travel because if they do not do that, then um, trying to get a visa and a lot of people from uh, and this is one of the reasons why people aren't coming in either. Uh, the Japanese visa process for those um, 
guided tours are a pain. Like there, there have been bottlenecks at the um, at the embassies trying Damn. to get visas. Trying to get trying to get visas to enter the country. So it's it's a huge it's a huge problem, but um, I'm just hoping that you know Kishida will open up his eyes and start to um, realize that you got to put this behind us and you have to think about what doing what's best for the, the economy and doing what's best for the world. You can't just live in a bubble. It doesn't work like that. You have to be open, especially if you if you are planning to have international summits and competitions. You need to have to be open. So, yeah, so fingers so, crossed, though. No? Yeah. So, with that being said, um, so Yokohama. So, um, I I did I made this I made this statement on Twitter, and I'm going to reiterate it here as well. Um, so if you if you consider what what time of year that the world championships will be taking place, which is in 2023 20, in August, probably the third week or whatever. And then you think about the last well, the, if you think about it, because I went to the Pikachu outbreak three years ago and it was around the same time. It was like in the first week or whatever. But I can definitely see. And then, of course, that was in, in Minata Mirai in Yokohama. And I can definitely see, and I'm just making a prediction out there, that what's going to happen is they're going to announce a Pikachu outbreak to happen the same weekend as Worlds. But the difference here is the Worlds competition will take place during the day. Uh, especially with the 29 in 2019, they shifted all of the Pikachu outbreak activities to the evening, like after five o'clock, like five, six o'clock afterwards until like 9 p.m. So I could definitely see that they could have competition to like five and then they could find, then they could have Pikachu outbreak stuff um, in the evening. I could definitely see them doing that. And plus uh, I could, I, I could only imagine. Well, and, and also they are going to have to, uh, if they do not do the tr- Mew under the truck meme, I'll be very disappointed because you got to do that. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no reason why not to. You got You got to play up to the fan, the 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 rumors and the, every, everything like that. I mean, hell, um, if anybody remembers Dogasu's post from three years ago, where he did where he did that thing where he had Pokemon Go open and he and he and he had Mew under the truck. I was with him. So that was so yeah, so yeah like I said, it's like crazy. That was no, that was uh sorry, that wasn't 2019. That was 2018. That was five. That was four years ago. But still, nice. my point stands. My point stands. Um, Yokohama is a beautiful city, and um, I'm hoping that with this, it'll pretty much like revitalize the Japanese tourism business because they have been hurting for like the last two years. Domestic yeah. travel, domestic travelers only can do so much. But you know, there have been people that have been saving up their money for literally years. And then they want to cash in what the, what they like to call in the business revenge travel. And if that is the case, people will just dump money into the Japanese economy because they need it. Like I will. I'm going to dump money into the Japanese economy. Now, the, there is there is only a few things of concern for anybody that wants to go to the event next year. And that What's is, that? S- since it is August... You have to realize that if you live in if you live in North America, be prepared to spend anywhere between thirteen hundred and twenty two hundred dollars for plane tickets. Mm-hmm. Good lord! Holy yes, yes. So I mean, so I, it's understandable. Yes, but like, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, and that's just the on pro- the flights, no? Yeah, that, and that's and that's on the flights because it's in the middle of summer. And that's what they always do. You, you, and, and sometimes actually it might actually next year, it might go up to $2,500 depending on, you know, how, how things go. So this is unless military. Um, the thing is though, I don't think you're going to be able to get a military discount for a world championship, but, but, um, but we'll see, but we'll see what happens. Unless if you work for an airline, you're not getting to Japan very cheaply. I, uh, the, 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 the cheap flights that you probably will see are during the off season. Like the on season is anywhere between late May and 
late August and about the beginning of September. And those are when the prices are. Uh, and and uh, yeah, and then there's another one. There's another peak between like March and April, like late March to early April because of uh, uh, cherry blossom season. And then again, uh, around Christmas. So yeah, so figure. So so figure if anybody wants to budget any flights to go out, it's probably a budget like $2,000. Uh, you might get, you might get a better deal, but $2,000 are, um, is, is about the, is about the price you could expect to pay. Hotel availability is going to be a problem too, but we got to wait until, um, the dates are announced. And also remember folks, if you want to make it a double trip, um, Comic Cat 102 should be uh, about maybe a week before or so. So if you want to do like a double Comic Cat World Championships thing, that could be a that could be a possibility. But um, that's going to be very interesting to try to like um, organize everything and make it into an itinerary that makes sense. But again, this all freaking hinges if Kish Kishida opens up the fucking country. So please. Uh, I, I can't wait guys? for when like this dude makes it into the finals. He's about to get there. Uh well, he got disqualified because he couldn't actually travel to our country. So congratulations to our winner who actually resides here. You you won. That Let that me. shit would be the most horrifying result of all time, bro. Yeah, because that, 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 that because essentially, if nobody's coming in, then now basically mean it'll be the same as the Japan Championships, and I'm like. Uh, it's the world championships. So then again, though, people the can world the of Japan. <laughs> yeah, the world of Japan. Then, then, then again, then again, though, you have people saying the same thing about the ma Major League Baseball. It's like, why is it called the World Series where you have freaking one team from Canada and fucking all the teams yeah. in the United States? <laughs> <laughs> same with football. American football, actually, Go too. Canada. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but they, yeah, but they just call it the Super Bowl. They don't call it the World Series. They should uh, call it the World like, Series. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's why they call it the World Cup for world. football. <laughs> yeah, because actually, because that actually, sense. that's all around the fucking world. <laughs> yeah, the world of America, damn it, <laughs> for those football teams. The World Let's Cup's happening. It. World Cup's happening in November, so I can't wait. Oh really? Oh, is uh, it? Oh my gosh! I find it entertaining it. to be honest, because I like I always like. Uh, where's the location countries. for that? Is it like in the Southern Hemisphere? It's like what's it? Qatar is it? Qatar. That's, that's yeah, Qatar is in the Middle East, I believe. Yeah, Qatar. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, so uh yeah, so that yeah, so they probably did that so that that, that it's not fucking one hundred and fifty degrees outside. Yeah. That. Yeah, that's what they said too, yeah, because yeah. it was like mm. too damn hot. Um the pro uh, Rad, the problem isn't the the amount of people vac in vaccinations. Apparently, from what I've been watching on YouTube by independent folks, is that um it has to do with the amount of hospital beds that are available in the private sector versus the public sector. And how, I mean, um, while uh, public hospitals might have the capacity, the private hospitals don't really have the capacity, and there's many smaller hospitals, and also the government can't really force them to do anything. Huh. That's as far, that's, a, that's, a, that's, the, that's the knowledge that I have, um, you know, according to a couple of a couple of people in the know like general in general and that's that's their that's their theory and hypothesis so the question but the thing is they have to give it a shot they have to give it a shot at least open it up and then see what happens and if something happens then then they can figure it out because that's because that's the whole thing i mean you look at the rest of the world it's oh well the, with the exception of a couple of countries the rest of the world is open like I can go like like I like I've been I've, I've been walking down I was walking down in um, Midtown today, and there was a lot of tourists. They were they were around and it it pretty it pretty much feels like almost normal now. So nice, you know, people yeah. So people are getting back to their lives. Now let's just it. hope that can continue to carry on in the in the coming. Uh in the coming weeks, months, and year leading up to this event. So, yeah. fingers crossed, bro. That's just the best way to say it. Just, just exactly. fingers crossed. Uh, so, let's continue on then in our discussion. So, once again, it is going to be taking place in 2023. 
We'll keep you guys up to date if we decide to go to the actual, you know, follow our gimmick of the world and actually travel across the world as well and see if maybe we can go and visit Japon as well. Fingers mm. crossed, though. Fingers crossed. We still have to keep up to date with, like, how things are going to shape up with uh, ANYC later this year. Uh, but we do initially plan on uh, hoping to visit the world of Japan as long as it's open for us. Then we'll definitely give it a shot. Uh, but like yeah, we and, said and plus, before, we'll yeah, keep plus, you up to date. Yeah, we'll keep you up to date. And also, you got to make the decision uh, probably within like six to eight months of the of the competition taking place. That's why I'm waiting. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, I've, already, I've, I've already told you guys like a billion times. I've had to cancel my Japan trip, the next Japan trip, like five yeah. times already. Oh, I think I said. I know. I've been like, I've been waiting. I've been sitting on my hands. Yeah. And I'm like, I want, I want to buy your shit. I want to go. I want to <laughs> go. I want to go. Money. I want to go. I want, I want to go money. into. I want to go into a hard off and go through the junk piles and buy like random shit. I want to do that, but I can't do that because you don't want to open your damn country. Uh, yes, well, we'll see. Money happens. at the border. Be like here. We uh, can have a dollar. If you let me in, I'll give you another one. <laughs> <laughs> one dollar for one dollar. Yes. Thank you. But uh, no. So let's see. Uh, once again, we just got to wait and find out. Well, we don't know anything ourselves. They know yeah. more info about it than us. We'll just keep it at that. All right, then. So let's move on into the next topic. Why don't we? Uh, so the next thing that they also revealed, uh, this would be something I feel Tyrone would probably be excited about because this feels like something that centers around his personal likings at least just 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 judging from it uh and i think he would have a good time with it so let's go take a second to talk about said uh said trailer so we're gonna be taking a look at the latest trailer that dropped for pokemon scarlet and pokemon violet literally talking about competitive play so this is the coolest thing about this whole new feature that they got going on. Besides the new Pokemon that we get to see here that is called, uh, what was it called again? Cyclizar? Yeah, there it is right there. Cyclizar. Cycl Cyclizar. Uh, he has a new move called Shetel that creates a substitute and then you swap places with a party Pokemon in waiting while there's a substitute still in place, which is absolutely incredible sort of thing yeah. right there. I love that idea. There is also brand new items and key mechanics being introduced, like the metal, uh, the metal herb or something that allows you to take all the the energies that I guess the Pokemon are using for the stat boost, and they get themselves that extra boost too. Uh, also, we get to learn about terrestrializing. I think that's how you pronounce the name, which actually finally got a idea as to what it really is, which is a uh, transformation of typing in general. It seems like all of the other typings you had are gone now. Uh, and you just are that typing of what terraform you become. So if you were rock and fire, now you become a, uh, a water, whatever it was they shot on screen there, uh, which is really cool. I love the gimmick. It looks really, really amazing. Um, also, nice reference there to the ghost Pokemon from Generation 1 in the, in the Game Boy days. Really love yeah. that detail. Very mm -hmm. nice reference there. Call back to it. Uh, there's some new moves as well, such as Terra Blast. There's even a new item that you can hold that apparently extends the amount of duration that a particular move that can go multiple times can get. So they showed uh, Bray Loom, which I think is confirmed now uh, to be in this, uh, to get Bullet Seed like up to five times thanks to the item. But that also means that, I guess, Terrestrializing is not something that your Pokemon holds confirmed now because mm -hmm. it's, it was Terrestrialized. And uh, it still used that item, according to the yeah, trailer. Yeah, so it's not a held. So it's not a held item. Yes, which does beg the question: How do you transform then? You know what I mean? It's gonna be interesting yeah. to see how things will play out for that. Also, why is this thing covering? Hold on, let me just move that. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, I I love the idea. This is a really cool trailer. I think they didn't show off too much, which is great. I think Tyron yeah. was probably the biggest fan about that because it only showed just what you needed to know. It showed one new Pokemon, which still leaves a lot of mystery, kind of confirms some other mods, and also gives you an idea for how the competitive scene will be playing out. I think even Nintendo Twitter account also tweeted about it, talking about like how there's like casual 
intense uh, matches or like uh, ranked matches, which is really cool. So they kind of streamline certain things as well. Uh, now let's just hope that the competitive play online actually does work uh, as it's supposed to for fans that will enjoy it, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they also added an anti-fake-out cloak as well. That's crazy. Holy shit. Good lord, there's so many cool things with this new game. At least on the competitive side, if you guys are big competitors, this will be a good game for you to play. Mm -hmm. And also, I think to those who are going to want to get into the competitive side, the game has streamlined itself to where it seems like it's more simplified. I like that the terraform doesn't look like it's this big, humongous, ambitious thing. It's just, you know, it's not Gigantamax, it's not a new form, it's, not, it's just literally just cute little things above your head. To, to mimic whatever form you're taking, you know? Mm. Yeah. Whether it be the flying form, the ghost form, mm. water form, grass form, fire form, etc. Uh, so really, really wonderful stuff going on with this one. Uh, so let me go and uh, hear what you guys have to say. Uh, we'll begin with you. I mean, what do you have to say about the new trailer we got for Scarlet and Violet? Well, I mean, like, I agree, to be honest. I'm kind of, like, before I watched it, I was like, oh, I really hope they're not going to reveal so much, like, pull a sun and moon again and they didn't so i was really happy they showed the competitive stuff which is actually like speaking of tyrone as well like that's something we talked about um uh, in his like reaction um to the whole thing be like oh if we get like another trailer for like at worlds we just hope it's explaining the competitive stuff and that's what we got so it's great um i don't really know too much about competitive so i can't really speak much about it like the i watched it with some friends of mine that even with the substitute plush uh they're really happy about that so i'm like okay okay that's that's interesting that like you call the sub but then it um, it just swaps out another Pokemon instead. So I was like, oh, okay, okay, that's pretty cool. Um, as for seeing just how, like, the gimmick's gonna work, um, I still, I feel like I still, like, don't quite understand it, but at the same time, I'm just like, okay, okay, this is, this is interesting, this is interesting. Um, as for the new Pokemon we got, I thought it looked cool. Low-key, I was kind of like, hmm, like, the Axu line? I wonder if they'll be friends. <laughs> That's something I wondered <laughs> yeah, about yeah, that. The, I think Joker even mentioned it in chat. Yeah. Like, yo, look, it's Axu's cousin or something. Yeah. It's long lost like, cousin, cousin, long legs right here. Oh, my yeah, God. Exactly. <laughs> so I thought that was really funny. Um, other than that, though, I don't really have too much uh, more to say for the for the trailer. I'm just glad they didn't, like, like you said, too. Like, they didn't reveal so much. It's just... This is the last thing, and then we're gonna go into the game, and we like know whatever we know from the trailers we got, and then that's it. We're just we're still going into it blind. But I find yeah. it really cool though that um, for the typings as well that it is like I guess permanent with the like the typing change when you transform. So I don't know about that because it's like, is there a time limit to it? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like it looks like it's not, but I don't know. <laughs> Which. It's fine, honestly. I think it's better we find out, I guess, when the game starts. But honestly, it kind of makes a lot of sense too that they like they explain the competitive stuff at Worlds because it's like that's a competition, right? So it's good for people mm -hmm. to know like this is what you're getting into if you come to Worlds the next year. You participate. So yeah, I think it's cool. It's cool. That's not, nothing much else to say on that. I'll say good job, Pokemon. Don't <laughs> reveal so much. Good job. <laughs> we don't even have all of the UI. Yeah, that's true. There's still a lot yeah. of mystery behind this, man. I'm fine with that. Uh, so, yeah. So, we'll talk a little bit more about our, our Axu cousin relative thing uh, relatively soon. Because there's a lot of interesting things going on behind it. Even our buddy uh, Larry, if you guys already know who Larry is. Uh, who's shown up previously in past uh, podcast sessions when we talked about uh, Larry stuff. Uh, I'll, he did bring up some things that I think would be fun to discuss. So, I'll get to that soon. Um, so let's go and uh, pass it on to our next buddy. What about you, Nessa? What do you have to say about the new info we got so far with the, uh, with the information of the competitive play scene? I actually like it. It was like short and sweet. Yeah, I was. I was expecting. I actually when I was watching it because I was. It took me a bit, and I feel like I feel. I was like I feel like I've seen something like this similar before. Um, when we were in Worlds a few years back, and back when um my Sword and Shield was coming out. And then I remember them like, like I think we guys mentioned in the chat yesterday, saying that it was pretty similar how how the show show was showing the competitive part. So we're like, oh, that's exactly how they showed in the worlds last time. So that was really interesting. Um, regarding the um, the what's it called, Terra, Terra, 
Terrestrializing? Yeah, don't worry. Terrestrializing. Terrestrializing. I love territories. <laughs> 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 I'm not the only one. I knew it. I wasn't the only one who stutters with this word. God damn, bro. I know. Because I, I had I a hard time with this. Loki, I was thinking like terraforming. And I'm like, isn't that Animal Crossing? <laughs> I was, like, I was like, thinking of terrorism <laughs> at one point, and that was no. quite wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Terrorizing. Terror time again. I had ter- uh, like terrorizing, or I guess where you call it. <laughs> Like, yeah, just, just the shiny it, new mechanic. Chandeliering. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I find it. I, I actually find it really <laughs> interesting because I pretty much in competitive. I feel like that's gonna change the game now because it's it's gonna be like a basically like a new learning point for everybody because now it's not gonna be like you expect like oh this Pokemon for example like Tyrantar is like ground or I'm sorry not ground dark and um rock now now he could be a ghost type too so then. It's like it's gonna change the it's gonna change the, like a lot of uh, competitive play. I could I could see it already. Just like with just the type, um, just the type change alone. So I'm actually excited and see how that's gonna what uh, that's gonna play. And I feel like we might get some new dangerous combinations probably playing in competitive and probably have some Pokemon that you would expect. You know, like like be in like in competitive like before and all of a sudden they they rose up to fame because of, because of the typing. So I'm actually pretty, um, curious. How that's gonna play out? Like, I wonder if each Pokemon is gonna have something special, or, or, or all Pokemon are, are viable to have something special. Like, they they get to they get to play with all the typing. So I don't know how that's gonna work. So, yeah, it's gonna be something we'll have to learn as we get the games ourselves, or whether they drop the information at us at a later point in another trailer. Mm-hmm. All right then. So let me go and pass it on to the next buddy, TSS. What do you have to say about the trailer? So the terrestrializing, the, the, the terrestrializing. Um, this means that um, people. Okay, so that means that it's going to make it much more difficult for people to read people's team, other people's teams. Now, this could also mean that now you have to, you know, have an additional subset of thinking. It's like, well, mm-hmm. what happens now if okay? Oh crap! I can't do that now because they have a, a ghost uh, terrestrialize on 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 them. So it's like now you have to think. Okay, since they don't, since obviously, since since now the te- the the um, terrestrialize is not a whole a held item, you cannot see it at the at the at the screens. So it's like now it becomes a problem. Now it becomes a pro- now now people will have to become creative in solutions to try to win, and I think that's the shakeup that we really needed in the competitive. I talk about it as a competitive player, but I'm not. But I but uh, you know after after you know you hang around Tyrone a little while, you kind of absorb some of that knowledge. But I could definitely see what's going on here. Um, as for the contents of the trailer itself, um, some of these uh like some of the some of these new abilities are really crazy loaded dice one of them you know uh just in case you just in case you want a twin needle to hit like fucking four times or whatever um <laughs> oh. you know it's gonna oh, be some God. people I mean, <laughs> yeah if, if it increases the amount that that you can actually hit i could just imagine or fucking double slap hitting five times all the time just imagine that um it's going to really change things. Um, that shed tail ability that that's really cool too. There's a lot of, there's a lot of great things to like about this trailer. Um, but, um, again, you know, and then you have mirror herb on the screen there with the stat boosts. So again, this is, this is really, they, they're really taking competitive seriously now. And I'm really happy for that. But now that we know that, you know, terrestrializing is going to be something, more deep than we originally thought it should be very very exciting also minus 10 points to the interpreter for not freaking translating the damn not saying the damn uh uh the release date when ishihara said the release date so minus 10 points to that guy <laughs> i knew he, i knew something for some reason when he was translating i was like i feel like he's not translating 100 percent because he said quite a bit and then he's like yeah and then the translator's oh, like there's it's, like it's, words. it's like no it, it's 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 like it's like that meme translation of uh kojima at the award show uh-huh. where he had where he had the guy where you had uh the, it, it's the, it's the edit where you have the guy the uh we have Kojima talking and they have the who wants to be a millionaire think music. 
<laughs> like oh, Jesus. <laughs> if you remember if you remember that uh, clip yeah it's like that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my god no because i had a feeling cause when i i was hearing him talk and i was like okay i don't understand japanese i feel like he said something way more and then i was like there is no way there's just like that little words like whatever he that translator said i was like hey there's no way that was that little words i, was like, no, I feel like no, something you're missing now because because he, he legitimately said the release date which is um uh gatsu uh oh, no that's like uh yeah no it's uh no he said he said uh ni sen ni ju nen uh gatsu juhachinichi and the fucking translator didn't freaking uh translate that the the interpreter didn't even freaking do that just like dude wow. he sent the fuck <laughs> he said the fucking date of it can't you just say that Come on, it's, dude. It's, it's like they say an entire sentence and the transfer is like, yes. We'll be on. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I, mean, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't that bad. It's just that the, that the, that the interpreter just decided to omit a fucking date, which is bad. Date in inserted here. Yeah. There we go. I am, <laughs> I am glad I wasn't the only one who thought so because I was sitting here like, I feel like he's this. I feel like I'm missing something. I don't know why, but I just had that feeling the way he <laughs> Because I was like, uh oh, that couldn't be that short. Uh oh. Yeah, it's like reads an entire paragraph. It's like, um, chandelier. Ah, turret <laughs> transforms back. <laughs> New Pokemon. Uh, name on screen. <laughs> Just that's it. Oh uh, God. <laughs> oh no. But I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say this much: um, interpreters have the most difficult job yeah. on planet Earth, especially if you have to. Just imagine you had to. You have to. You have to live interpret on a stage where millions of people watch you mm -hmm. yeah i, I would say i would say that's even that's that's even that's even a bigger that's even a bigger uh a, a, a larger um intimidation than just getting on the stage and speaking your native language yeah it's like exactly it's like public speaking but like imagine like someone's telling you what to say but you have to like well translate it so it's like bro your your brain's going your brain and your um yeah and, and, and your and mouth has to go at the that, same time. <laughs> yeah, and on top and on top of that, um, especially when you're standing on a stage, I know I know that if you ever watch Treehouse Live, there might be some guy, there might be some uh, interpreters that have like a little notepad with them. Oh yeah, I see yeah, that too. Yeah. Have you have you have you have you ever noticed that? Like some of the Treehouse ones where you had like you know people with the with the notepad and yes. they just and they just scribbled down what they what they're basically doing is um as as the person is speaking they're they're picking out specific like key points like words and then yeah. they can and then they could recite that just imagine you could you have to do that just by hearing and you yeah. have no reference so it is really difficult especially in a language of like japanese where it is structurally it's a language it's a, it's a context implied language and also yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's also it's also a completely different sentence structure than than a western language also when you said treehouse, my Canadian brain was like the Children's Network. <laughs> I was like, wait, no, that's not <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna, we're gonna have we're gonna have we're gonna have a Pokemon and Tupi and Binu fucking crossover. Let's go. <laughs> let's go in Japanese. Let's go Tupi and Binu in Japanese. Japanese. Japanese let's, let's, go. Go. let's go. Let's go. My Canadian brain was like, wait, and then I remembered Nintendo Treehouse. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. Good lord. <laughs> oh well, i'm sorry no but you're you're right though it's it's 100 percent hard um but and i imagine too like imagine that's your first day and it's like you have to like translate like something that's like so big in front of so so many people and it's just like wow i signed up for this this is my job Dude. wow stage yeah it's it's like stage fright times 500 or it could be yeah. worse like the uh the when they the, when they go off script and then they have to make the translators figure out what the hell happened oh yeah remember oh, the yeah. suda 51 oh, shit, shit. The Suda 51. If you all remember that, you all know what I'm referring to. That shit yes. had me in tears. All of yeah, us were the, completely caught off guard. Yeah, with that the one, one during the one during that the E3. Oh, the, oh, oh! That unlocked a memory. <laughs> oh, I thought I hid that away. Oh, the <laughs> memories. No, yeah. 
So, exactly. So. Oh, before we move on into the next next topic, there is one thing I want to bring up real quick, and once again, it involves our little boy, the the lizard, the the cyclosard or whatever the hell yeah, that thing is called. Exus cousin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, pretty much. So Exus cousin looks a uh, very awful familiar to that of the Coridon and Miraidon design, if you can tell. I mean, how even trainers in the game clearly are shown riding those boys in the streets, which is hilarious yeah. to me. Um, <laughs> But I guess uh, it kind of shows off evolution in a natural way. Not necessarily like Pokemon evolution, but more so just time passing by. And letting that play the role in how these Pokemon sort of become a thing. You know, like mm -hmm. um, how apparently the chickens are tied to dinosaurs and all that. Yeah. So that that's kind of what Cyclizard Cyclozard is probably going to be. Like, it's going to be a Pokemon that exists. However, I don't think it evolves. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just going to stay as is. And the Miraidon or the Koraidon that you encounter are ones that came from either the past or the pres or, or the future and hopped into the present timeline. Which would yeah. make sense. Oh. Because that would explain why these Pokemon look as weird and still very familiar to the ones in the present. And why only... Uh, why, why you have that Pokemon with you that nobody seems to really be reacting to towards to you know what i mean you have yeah. a legendary yeah. pokemon in your game and nobody seems to really give a shit about the fact that you're riding the pokemon that's from mythological eras or maybe from the future that nobody knows about so azure, Sam azure samurai says that she looks like an old-fashioned turn signal i gotta look at that actually oh, it? oh, by oh the my way, gosh i love the name of this pokemon's name in in uh, german because the thing is called mopex Really? It's called That's Mopex. So cool. The little the little lizard is called Mopex. And if you guys know what wow. that's referring to, moped. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That's such a genius. That's such a genius. I can't I need all my German folks out there to get me your officially named Mopex and send them to me because I would love that so much, bro. Oh such my gosh, a cool you know what nickname. I want? I want like a little comic now of this of like I'm gonna call it moped now. <laughs> I just want a uh, a little comic of this Pokemon talking to Miraidon and uh, Kuraidon just being like, I want to be you when I grow up. I want to be a car. Yeah. <laughs> I want to I I be a motorbike. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, when, beep, beep. When I, yeah. When I grow up, I'm going to be a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> because, because, yeah, you, yeah, because, yeah, because if you, yeah, because if you think about it, you went, you went from, you went from being a moped to a Bafang, bi a b b Bafang bicycle to a, to a, to motorcycle. a freaking motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. It's like first day of kindergarten. What do you want to be when you grow up? A motorcycle. Oh man. Okay, so let's go and move on into the next. Be a train. Next. Yeah, be a train. Be a train. <laughs> choo choo. <laughs> so the next info we got going on right now is actually focused to the Pokemon trading card games. It looks like card chones are still in development, by the way. But what really needs to be talked about is the fact that apparently EX is returning. Well, I oh. believe that's the main gimmick this time around, is yeah. it not? So yeah. we get a chance to get our first glimpse of some of the Pokemon showing off here, such as Miraidon, uh, Koraidon, Lucario, Mimikyu, Magnezone, amongst some other ones. And then they show off at the very end exactly what the hell the whole premise behind this is. That, yeah, apparently EX is going to be a thing returning to the world of Pokemon TCG. And this is going to be the new standard format for the franchise moving forward, uh, or at least starting in 2023. Also, also, I like how the fact that uh, the EX is in the is in a similar font as the Internet Explorer font. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, no, but it's, it looks great, though. I, I love the design. It's simple. It's just EX. That's it. And we're just going to have to learn and wait till more information drops about it. Uh, but the cards do look nice. So if you guys want to go yeah. back and collect them all once again, uh, you best make sure you do that, buddy. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there are some other things I also skipped out on from the previous gaming things. I know my buddy Larry also brought some new information about, like, uh, they actually revealed this on the EX cards for the mascots. Um, oh, interesting. So, I see a lot of people worrying. Oh, that people are thinking that the Karaidon and Miraidon is going to be something like similar to, like, a Nebby issue. Not necessarily sure what that means, but yeah. Uh, that you need a certain that you need a certain item. 
Oh. Oh shit! That would, huh? That would be interesting. Yeah. Oh, I got it. A full tank of gas. There we go. <laughs> 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 With these prices, no, 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 no wonder they're legendary. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you get you get you, you get a mystical gas can or some yes, shit. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> No, but and I if, think the and, and if I'm and if I and if I'm right, what do I win? I win nothing. <laughs> IRS game freak. We got it. <laughs> we got the gasolina prices, bro. We got it for you. No, but uh, what Larry was saying about Coridon Miraidon, and I was going into it, but I think uh, Larry said it best. Uh, these Pokemon, the reason why they have no data on it is because of the fact that probably Miraidon and Coridon are actually Pokemon that do exist in the different timelines of the past and the future, but they don't necessarily exist in this universe. <laughs> and somehow they came God. to this universe and now are part of it. At least that's just judging from, you know, what I'm just <laughs> getting from what Larry told me, which is really interesting. So they're like from the past and from the future, but not from our universe, which would explain why uh, why none of the trainers or anybody's really reacting as heavily to it at <laughs> all whatsoever. I don't know. That's just something that Larry said, and I thought it would be interesting to point Don out, so yeah. Donnie, Donnie got it half right. It's supposed to be smokes with cigarettes. Cigarettes? Oh, cigarettes. <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> and he smokes with cigarettes. Yeah, Yeah. so it's going to be interesting to learn more about Coraidon and Miraidon moving forward. That much I'm excited for. Uh, so yeah. Thank you, Donnie. Once again. Clip. Yeah, oh, I got clipped. Yeah, welcome to the clip family. <laughs> wait, uh, wait a second. Inspiring quaint I I Bible thump. I love that. Nice. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. What else was there that was also talked about in Worlds? Uh, besides the new TCG format that's coming in 2023 and the new, uh, the new video game info we got, I mean, there was, of course, the championship battles in itself, which yeah. was looking to be mm -hmm. very lovely. I know there was a bit of controversy behind the finals. I'm not really going to get into that one. But uh, aside from that, though, everything was pretty nice. However, I do want to talk about something that I can honestly say I think not many of you know about. And that's the spiel controversy. Have you guys been following the spiel controversy? No. That spiel? Has been happening. Yeah, the spiel I controversy. I kind of heard a little bit about it. Okay, what? so I'm going to show this on stream, and you guys are going to have to uh, follow along with me with this one. And I'll show this okay. to you guys here as well. So give me just a second while I unfull screen this one and uh, give you guys all the infos that you need to know. So uh, give me just a second. So uh, in, in Worlds... What was going on was that apparently the Pokemon Twitter uh, account, uh, actually, let me just also do this as well. Okay, so let me also share this here with you guys in the call too, so you guys can check it out for yourselves here in the call. Uh, it'll be easier for you guys as well to get an understanding of what's happening. So there was something funny going on on, on the world of Pokemon. A very hilarious thing about that the TCG was uh, showing off this first image that shows right here. I'll click on it right now. It says, oh my God. wow, this is a feel good deck, right? And then you see like all these feel cards. There's like five feels at the bottom. There's one in the top there. And look at all the, the amount of cards that are right there to the left and to the right. Uh, mm -hmm. And then in the bottom, someone says right here, someone tell that Sphiel that they are disqualified. You cannot what? have six Sphiel cards in one deck. To which uh, we then get a follow-up tweet. Uh, we'll get to that one soon. Uh, let me go back to this particular tweet if I could find it. Hold on a second. Let me go and click on it again. Uh, this right here. Um, we get another tweet by the Pokemon company that says, oh no, a Sphiel challenger. And so you see it right here. And it shows a Sphiel going up against another Sphiel in a Sphiel-based deck <laughs> oh, going I on here. That one. So the Pokemon company over here, Pokemon says, we just hope both competitors have a Sphiel good time. Very wholesome tweet, right? And then we go to the Play Pokemon Twitter account where they said, we have since determined that these decks are not in fact, are, are in fact oh. not standard format. And both spiel have been no. disqualified. Oh. oh! So to then the play Pokemon Jeez. Twitter account literally follows up the tweet with showing two spiel being grabbed by this dude and getting their asses pulled out from the stage. Let's go! <laughs> I love that. Oh, I love that they went oh, with wait. it. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> God. I, okay, Iris, 
actually remember seeing like the first one that you were showing, but I didn't see the end of it. So that's oh no, no, you thought that was the end of it? Oh no, I got good news, buddy. It still goes. Just this spiel. To which then the Pokemon TCG company follows up that video with this image of the two spiel and the officer in the telling them to get the fuck out of here. Oh, I love that so, much. That's so beautiful. I love it. This, this dude over here is like telling me, get your ass out of here, bro. We don't want these feels in <laughs> oh. here, bro. Um, so these feels got disqualified and got kicked out of the show, oh uh, show floor, bro. Is that it or there's more? No, there's, there's more. still more, buddy. Trust me. Oh, I my got, God. I yes. Got yes. Uh, to which then the Pokemon TCG Twitter account says, feeling pretty good about this oh plan. <laughs> 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 oh my god oh, amazing that it, it, ran, evil, it ran with it please oh that's, that's why if you by any chance saw images on twitter or on discord with like a bunch of spiel with a cool mustache and oh, these cool god. shades that's because Yo, this came and i love smug spiel oh my god <laughs> well, I, saw, I saw a taco um yeah, our buddy taco, taco also made a tweet saying it's a that really good beautiful. show oh and i love that this show continues on bro Oh, so the, the, yes. the person made a thread about this and says, this isn't an official tweet, but for those unaware, the spheels were on the caster's desks during the TCG finals in oh all age God. divisions. You see them both just <laughs> chilling right there. <laughs> to which this person replied, infiltration successful. Oh, I love <laughs> that. Oh. So yeah, the two spheels are just chilling up over here, bro. It's incredible. I love it. Oh, man, but it continues then from there. To which then the Pokemon Play TCG or Play Pokemon Twitter account decide to say, please note that we do not condone ban evasions at official Play Pokemon events. Thank you all for helping us uphold the integrity of this program. Oh, my God. <laughs> So this Pokemon got in, and to which then, of course, they they follow up the the tweet right here with this <laughs> this, this cute ass gif right here of just the shades coming in. Look at that! Mm, I love that. <laughs> oh my god! It's such a simple thing. I love it so much. And mm. then at the very bottom, it says here, not part of the official tweets again, but in the end, they ended up behind bars for their crimes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <right there. laughs> Oh, and so that's how it ends. They they just end with them being uh, in jail, bro. Oh yeah, and also Pokemon literally tweeted out saying unhand them. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh I'm God. so surprised though. No one made like a spiel Twitter, like and then getting their perspective. No, but there you know there was I mean? a hashtag go going on for it. Hashtag justice for spiel. That's amazing. So the, while oh. there was no Twitter account, there was a a trend was a going hashtag. On with the hashtag. Okay. Okay, Twitter, good job. You did something good. Yeah, that's fantastic. So that's pretty much how it ends. They are in jail as uh, they rightfully deserve to be for their crimes of feel plain, but uh crimes of passion. Yeah, so congratulations. That like the whole thread was amazing. I loved every that's single so bit funny. of it. It was so stupid. It was great shit. Uh so yeah. Good I, stuff all I around. remember seeing I always saw like the first image of like the cards and then but I didn't understand like, and then I didn't see the rest of it, so that's all new. Yeah, thanks to that person, uh who was it? Uh Tsunami VGC for uh making this thread so people can follow it easily. Uh it was a wonderful way to learn about the feel story behind the TCG and Pokemon World. So that shit had me in tears every single time I looked into it. Great <laughs> shit all around. Mm -hmm. Uh so yeah. So once again, wonderful things happen in Worlds this year. I, I love that they committed to the joke and just kept on rolling without throughout the event. I think that's the best thing about this whole moment. Uh so yeah. Uh let's see. What else was there that went down within Worlds? And honestly, I guess just for that, it's just the traditional things that Worlds is commonly yeah. known for, from the TCG just plays to the Pokemon Go tournaments. I think this is also the final year for Pokemon Tournament. If yeah. I'm correct, mm -hmm. uh, would, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would they even made a video about it saying, you know, to as a thank you to the the Pokemon community? Uh, and uh, it but was yeah, a all nice touch and tribute, yeah, all two of them, man. Um, congratulations! Yeah. To <laughs> <them>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, I mean, we I, I own the game and clearly Same. I play it like once every millennia, but like it, it's it's a good game. I just wish people had pushed more into playing the game because it's such a wonderful yeah. game and I feel people were just scared of it being a new thing rather than just giving it a shot. I mean, it's Pokken, it's Tekken and Pokemon. I mean, how could you not love that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
That's it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you had I, anything I, else to add. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I played, I, I played, um, Pokemon tournament on the Wii U. Yes, I played same. it. I played it on. I played it in the arcade back when they had it for like a month of David Buster's back in 2015, and I also played it in Japan. And yeah, then, I remember uh, the David Buster once. Switch. I even have the card for it. <laughs> yeah, I like. Mm-hmm. I like sadly. Sadly, I never. I never got along with that game. <laughs> I like you got, it on the Wii You got to put a lot of effort and time into that game because, of course, there's yeah, all these like combos a, and tech and shit. Yeah, there. Well, it, it's, I was it's, it's that I don't the rock, have the paper, patience. scissors mentality. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Something, yeah, something I didn't, don't have patience for. I liked also, it. I mean, it's a good concept, but like, I just feel like it could have been executed a little bit better, especially for like, more Pokemon stuff. Yeah, and even like the online multiplayer too, I felt like could have been way better because you're just sitting in that lobby, just waiting and, mm. and waiting. To match up, and you can't even like like specifically like look for like a friend to play with. So if you your friend oh, is there, you guys have to just match up at the exact same time and just hope that oh, it, you guys geez. match up. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, but the demo days are fun though when it came out on the Switch because like all, I remember all of us played it, so it was yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, once again, it's just a title that I think deserves more love, and maybe if there ever comes a point where we get a Pokemon two, uh, that would be wonderful as well. And I hope they really commit into going above and beyond for the franchise. Because it is a wonderful yeah. idea that I think can, I should say, does deserve another chance at trying yeah. out. You know, so yeah. And also currently, yeah, as people are mentioning, there, you can currently play Pokemon Tournament right now on the Switch. I believe there is a demo currently available yeah. for those who want to try out the game. Uh, so if you guys haven't had a chance to play Pokemon, uh, at least give it a shot right now during the time that it is available on the Switch. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, and that's all I got to say on Pokemon Tournament. Congratulations to the franchise for being where it is. And uh, I can only hope for those who are big Pokemon fans that whatever comes in the future for them, they get what they ask for. So fingers yeah. crossed on it. Uh, exactly. All right. So Pokemon Worlds, not much else can be said for it, at least that I can think off the top of my head. Oh, they did actually reveal some things. I think for you, TSS, you probably will get the most kick out of it. Uh, yeah. Pokemon Masters. Yeah. So po- let's go ahead <laughs> and talk about this real quick because I'm kind of a little bummed out. I'm going to be real with you. I'm very bummed out they didn't show this off during the Pokemon Presents because I think this shit would have blown everybody's mind away if people had caught on to it. And what I mean by that um, is the trailer that they showed off in Pokemon Presents yeah. for the Masters yeah. event. <laughs> because yeah. at yeah. first glance, you won't know what it is until you go frame by frame. Uh, and it was revealed at the time that you'd see a silhouette of Ash going and approaching uh red and his pikachu now a couple of days ago we got official confirmation that this young man turns out to be none other than ash from pallet town and his dream is to become the world's best pokemon master and would you believe it he turns out he's going to be in masters as a master sync pair Ooh, in a couple yeah. of days i believe right i think yeah. when is it dropping um, again let me take the a look. The 27th, I believe? It was a Thursday. Usually Let me take Thursday, a look. Friday. Yeah, uh, aside from that, though, they're also going to be running a... Uh, they're also going to be running the Trainer Lodge, which is basically your way of bonding with your husband or waifu. So if you guys want to do that, there's that available for you. Uh, there's currently, at the moment, going a no-cost 10-pair ticket, uh, ticket scout uh, fest where you can get mm-hmm. up to 110 Fold, I get or 10 10 folds to make up to 100 yeah. uh, pairs total. Uh, which you're is being very generous right now, actually, because I, I opened my game up yesterday and I, I got like probably like about seven eight thousand gems. Yeah, I'm already at like 26,000, wow. which I know is very little, mind you, compared to like yeah. how much what? you need. Yeah, I got 26,000 by opening my game uh, up after not playing it for so long. Me. I, and, I, uh, I have 15,000. No, oh. uh, I have one hundred and twenty-six thousand. So I'm going to ask you, buddy. Are you Dude. saving up for him? Uh, for yeah. Satoshi and Pikachu. Yes. You are going to go and try to because I heard masters are the worst to get yeah. in this game. I mean, I mean, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to give it. Um, I'm going to probably do like maybe three ten pulls and then the day, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, because hey, I think I. Uh, uh, I was going to say, sometimes if you haven't played a game in a while, um, sometimes you'd be, uh, and if, if you try to, like, pull, like, one of the new the new ones, like, for example, Ash, like, you're more likely might get him in the first yeah. try. 
especially your first tenfold, because it has happened to me a few times. Like I don't play the game for quite a while. And then without even trying, I get like one of the rare characters that's featured. And I was like, oh, OK, my first try or something like so. It does. that yeah, sometimes. But, that but, the, but the whole thing is um, in order in order to get the maximum amount for the uh, the sync move, you have to pull them five times. Mm hmm. Or I think they have items too to uh, boost. And he's a master, so he's going to disappear at some point. Yeah, that's the yeah. scary part. Aside from this, though, I think they also it, revealed though. what else they revealed. Uh, you can get over ten thousand gems during the run-up rally, apparently. Yes. Yes. Uh, and get up to just the the hundred folds and all that. So yeah. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, and also and also if you log into the game, you get a you get an extra four hundred. Um, uh well 400 stamina? stamina 400 stamina yeah so so you could actually you could actually do 600 like have actually use 600 stamina a day and still be at 999 if you have it i have to ask okay yeah. what's with the battle points cuz i never understood that uh, um you get so, items yeah so so if, uh so when you when you participate in any of the events or battles um you get amount you get amount of battle points and then once you get an, a certain amount of battle points in the threshold you get certain items you can also, get you can, you can get like you can get like uh regional tickets and other things like that also oh. you can get like characters too like certain characters like um with yeah. the battle points like after you reach to a certain amount so then right now i'm actually pretty close to the ten thousand mark and then I, oh. I think that's probably a better, um, like, uh, I guess, character selection or guess. Like, they're like five stars, I may believe. The ones mm. that are at 10,000. And then the ones that are like usually 2,000, I think every 2,000, you could pick the, all the other ones and they're like four stars. But they're actually pretty good, though. I actually tried them out and I was like, oh, I like them. And then they're like the, so then I use, I usually use them in my gameplay. And then it's like, mm -hmm. and then they've been pretty useful to me. I'm like, mm hmm. So that definitely, yeah. So it's, they're definitely worth it, though. Yeah, and and especially now you have, uh, especially now, it, it you guys should be playing uh, masters because of all the bonuses. Like you can get a daily bonus where you can get like a ton, you can get tons of gems and also like mm -hmm. level four manuals and orbs and stuff like that, and also some uh, of the um, the drinks. Yeah, I literally yeah. got my characters up to one forty, and I haven't touched this game for like half a year, bro. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, no, like it's I, pretty, it's I, crazy. yeah, yeah, it is, and I'm and I'm and I'm grinding a ton of like uh, ticket vouchers for like one of the events so I can get more items. I'm actually yeah, excited that, that I was moment. excited. Brock got finally a six star, so I was like, ooh, because like, um, yeah, I remember EX. the EX one, yeah, because I was trying. I was like, I remember at one point when they had the cancel event, and I actually used um, to fight Giovanni. I used Brock. I believe it was Brock. Misty and then Lieutenant Surge, and then because I was trying to boost their attack and everything, but oh, I'm sorry, not I'm sorry, not Misty, Erica, er and then yeah. Brock was my attacker, but then because he like only, I, and then I tried my best to boost him up to the five stars to like get him that extra boost, but I couldn't quite take him down easily because it was just like it was just too much for me. So then, and I was like so close to that very times, so I'm like, damn, I, I was like, I don't have enough yeah. power ups, I have to. Try. So then yeah. now. Now I'm glad he's a six star, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was kind of like, Sweet. yeah, yeah. And it's like, um, it, you know, and and some and at some point of the game, you you like uh, reach a limit of items. Like for example, I have mm -hmm. right now I have ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine sync orbs. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Actually, you know yeah. what? I got a ticket. Let me go and do a tenfold summon right now. Let's see what I get. I'm gonna try. Can you, show, can you show on a screen? Well, uh, no, I cannot because it's on my phone. But oh, uh, it's just okay. a blue light, so I'm not expecting anything in the in this one. But it was nice it's to like, see. Let's see what I got. Yeah, I only got a bunch of three stars in this one. Okay, and uh -huh. one four star. So nothing special on this one, folks. But it was nice to pull for it, regardless. Uh, yeah, like I said, like I said, once once the Satoshi one comes out, I'm I'm gonna try to do at least five pulls for him. Yeah, best I'm of luck to all of to. those who want to get Satoshi and Pikachu, bro. I wish you the best <laughs> of luck. I'm gonna try it for. <laughs> We all got to hope for the best. I, I see right now they oh. also dropped um, uh, the seasonal oh. characters. I see Leon yeah. here with his uh, Colarix or whatever that thing is called. Oh, no. I, I have that. What's that, what's that face? The Eternus one. I have, I have the Eternatus one. Yeah, the, 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 the Cygnus suit. 
Nice. I I know that I need to get one of the seasonals. I think it's actually the. Uh... I got Cygnus Suit and Morty with uh, the shiny Ho Oh, I think. Nice. Oh, nice. Ooh. Yeah. There was like some really good ones though, but one of my favorite ones actually in Masters, I really love um, the Holiday uh, Erica one. Like mm. she's actually one of my top ones I use quite a bit in the game because she's because even though she's support, but actually like but she does get pretty good power ups, and if you know what you're doing, like you could actually she could help you heal your team or ah. boost your defense. So, so I was kind of I was like surprised how strong she was. And then another one I really personally liked was. Um, um, what's that girl? The for soldier, sword and shield. The girl. Um, I forgot her Marnie? name right now. Marnie? Not Marnie. No, no, Sonia? no. The main. Me? Not Gloria? Sonia. No, the main. The Gloria. There we go. Gloria. Ah, Gloria. She like she's actually really good with the with the Italian and because there's like a there's like a move where if you use a move you get the double boost and then and then if you use like any attack like I usually use snipe shot then you get the extra boot uh, boost bonus. Mm. And then when you get to the part when like um, when you're powered up to use your your special signal move, then sometimes I'll use that and then use the special signal move and then it it, it really it really helps quite a bit. So I was surprised how strong she is. Ty hmm. mentions here that uh, new red and Cynthia costumes and pairs are coming. Yeah, Ooh. we saw them uh, oh, in the shot. Makes sense. In the in the poster, so we saw. I think it's Cynthia with Lucario. So that's oh, gonna wow. be a thing. Oh wow! <laughs> and then red. Uh, the red design I saw, I was like, I like his new design. That they well, that red. it looks like N because it's like black, black and white. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking that was for his and Pikachu. I thought, honestly, mm. Mm. I don't know. I actually That's... thought it was so cool though. Yeah, they, yeah they, they look great. Like, like I said, you know, what makes the Masters nice is that you get a lot, you, and especially if you do like the backstory. And by the way, you better do those backstories because you get all the yes. gems and that that really like. Uh, can build up really fast and also if you do all of the dailies you get an extra 80 gems so it's 560 gems a week which is why the hell you're not doing that uh the only thing the only thing is in the last couple of months they added the requirement that you have to do a sync orbs um yep. you have to do you have to do a sync or you have to do a sync orb uh training on top of it so it, it's a little bit extra because unless if you, I mean, then again, though, if you have like, if you have like uh, thou, uh, tens of thousands of skip tickets, like I do, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I already have like <laughs> yeah. over a thousand of them, bro. I have like, well, wait, let me see how many fucking. Oh skip shit! Tickets? My my master's game just crashed. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh damn! <laughs> damn, damn, bro! You know what? Maybe it's telling me to stop. Pokemon <laughs> master's crash. No. Yeah. I should, I should, I should see how many skip because you have to remember I've been, I've been playing since like day one, and I think I, I, I could tell you how many days that I've been logged into this game. Now it's not consecutive, obviously they don't count like consecutive days, but um, if I go into uh, my profile, for example, um, you know the shit would load. Oh, here's Leon and the Eternatus. Um, if I go to my profile, uh, I've logged in for. 911 days oh, oh no my. oh no that number oh no damn you you have a perfect attendance record bro <laughs> oh, oh my god uh, 911 days damn. get the fuck Addiction. out of here uh -huh. see yeah. i wasn't the only one i, I was only just making it uh, known <laughs> whereas tss okay. kept it hidden <laughs> yeah um, okay i can tell you yeah so i can actually tell you so i have like <clears throat> How many freaking sk I have 12,857 skip tickets. Damn. Yeah. They give you a lot. <laughs> no, they, they give you a shit ton of skip tickets in this game. Hell, right now, how many do I have? And I haven't touched this game in a while. 900. Uh, still good. <laughs> Donnie, call an ambulance, but not for me. No, call <laughs> wait, call an abundance. An abundance not, for me. Uh, 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 call an ambulance. What the fuck? Were you? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I, I thought I read that as ambulance because you know we're talking about that. Number. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Confused face. Bro. Uh, is the storylines of Masters EX is close to Pokemon Adventures? How is it? Ah. Uh, the story, the the storylines, they're they're kind of like because they 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 base it all in the Paseo region, so 
it, in and of itself, it is following like a completely different canonical storyline, but it still has lore of the video games and anime and stuff. Yes. For example, Red gets beat up a lot of times in this game for some Damn. reason. He does. He does, yeah. which is hilarious to me. <laughs> I know, oh, and, I then, was... and then my, my favorite one is the, is, the, is the time when Red actually talked. Yes. Words are, words are unnecessary. And people are like, <laughs> you see, like, you see, you see, <laughs> yeah, you see the like faces. Saying, I love that. It was beautiful. They're like, yeah. uh huh. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought I was so stupid. I was like, wow, okay. Oh, there we go. I beat the torture trainer. They give you like a shit ton of gems, I think. Yo, oh, yeah, I told them ton of items. Mm -hmm. Does Red ever get a break, AG? Lol. <laughs> Not in that's this a game. good one. Not no, I, I remember, if, if that's the case, maybe Ash is going to beat Red easily. <laughs> But I don't know. You have no idea though. what you just said, buddy, because <laughs> people will the words be that came out of your mouth is about to unleash a whole can of worms no <laughs> world is prepared for, but buddy. I, I know, but on reality, though, they're probably going to make them tires, or we don't even see the winner, because I was telling I that to them. That's, like, that's, that's what they usually did with a lot of like the major events. You would think, like, oh, who, when they fight each other, then nope, they don't declare a winner. So it's like pain. So as long crazy. as it's Pikachu versus Pikachu, maybe. But if you bring in his JN team, no. No. <laughs> just, no. Just, yeah. just let Ash and Pikachu be. Because in the oh, yeah, trailer, it which, shows just those two. So Speaking of which, I, I want to yeah. go. Speaking of which, I just want to go on a little tangent. If you have not uh, claimed your uh, Satoshi Mr. Fish, you have until uh, Thursday to do it. <gasps> Mr. Fish? Yes, What's Mr. Fish is available to purchase. On the uh, on the I'll Nintendo purchase. Switch for free if you put in the code. <gasps> I forgot the, the code is name. Mr. Fish. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What Mr. Fish? <laughs> I wish. I wish you were fish. Well, also, uh, also, 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 the World Championships gave away a, the Victini. Yeah, no, I forgot. Oh, nice. I, I think you you all, there's a code for that now, isn't there? Yeah, but yeah, but it expired like uh, yesterday. Yeah, it expired Ooh. like on it expired Monday UTC. Damn. So if you didn't get your Victini, sucks for you, guys. I'm like, oops. I know. Yeah, my friend was reminding me about that yesterday, and I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget the. Well, I mean, it's Victini. Everyone has Victini. Uh, but like, don't forget about Mr. Fish, because Mr. Fish is more important, guys. Hashtag yeah. Mr. Fish. Yeah. Hashtag we stand the fish. Yeah, we we stand fish. Damn it. Fish. We love fish. Issue. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so oh, there it is. There's Donnie, the code. Yep. Gunj, Donnie, thank Gunjua, you. Gunjua, Gunj, Gunj, I thought, I thought that's like a Koga for two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Didn't Joe say it was extended a day? Was it? Let me take a look on the Cerebi forums here. Well, if it was extended a day, you are still too fucking late. <laughs> <laughs> because because they based it off of like twenty three twenty three fifty nine fifty nine UTC. And it's not, and and you do not count that towards Britain, the British time, because BST, or as I like to jokingly say, bullshit time, is UTC plus one. UTC is the unit, uniform, uh, the unit, the universal coordinated time, time coordination. Which right now, if you are in the Eastern time zone EDT, that is UTC minus four. If you're on the West that Coast, means you done UTC missed up, bro. Seven, UTC minus seven. Yeah. And um, and for and always Japan will be UTC plus nine. <laughs> so in other words, you're early to being late. Good job. Good job. Yay. Yeah. Correct. But I'm just looking through this and yeah, it's just uh, speaking of merchant speaking of merchandise, uh, I think we post I think you posted it earlier um somewhere that um Dedene is gonna get a giant life size crush. <gasps> The yeah. Dene oh, Taro and is so Rowlet. happy. And Rowlet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it looks so oh my cute. Gosh. Yeah, it's adorable. Also, we saw official Talk. merch for what's yeah. coming in Halloween. Dude, they're releasing a Zorua hoodie, bro. I was no, like, no. I saw oh, I that shit. That. I'm like, I'm buying that and I'm going to use that for ANYC later this year, bro. If oh I can get God. my hands on it. It's so fucking adorable, bro. It's no, the Rowlet plush is out of stock. Unless I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah. I don't even yeah, think it's, it's available right now, is it? Let me see. Oh, that's Speaking definitely the wrong one. And and then going aside from Pokemon for just a second here, so um, if anyone remembers, so 
if you remember um, during AX, you had Kason come out and they promoted like V Sojo Japan, right? Mm -hmm. So finally, I get the fucking notification that they finally shipped the um, the Kason and Nazuna V Sojo shirt after like um, over a month, and it was it was been delayed because originally they told they I I ordered that on July the second, and mm -hmm. they told me oh the estimated date will be August eighth to eleventh. Never showed up. And now, finally, today, I get the notification that it has been shipped. Yay. Yes. Finally, get, finally getting my V Shoujo shirt. Hey, listen, you you uh, spent so much for that, buddy. You deserve it. bucks. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Are you gonna, Amy, are you going to get it? Oh, they, there's a Piplup oh. one, too. No, oh, no. Look at this. Yeah. Look, oh, no. Look, look at and it's, and it's, it's, it's available, too. It's a Piplup large micro bead plush. Oh, it's the one we saw over there in the world's image earlier. Oh, my yeah. God. It's oh, just, no. How much is Oh, it's only 35 That's not bad. I yeah, that's pretty good. More. That's, that's a pretty decent price. It's yeah. a pretty decent oh, price, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. There's that's more. There's even a Pikachu. Oh, they have yeah. a lot of Pikachu ones. Why oh, the like The Pikachu London one was cute. This website is bad for my health. Hey, look, oh, there's no. a man tyke with a piplup on top, and it's for Christmas themed. Look, they have a spiel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel too good about that one. Oh, there's uh, a Pikachu with a uh, with a Snorlax costume. It's cute. Oh, it's so cute. Mm -hmm. There's a baking Pikachu. I have to get it. I feel like there is. There has to be Chef Chew. Oh, there's there's been a bunch of chef chews before. Yeah, yeah. a Bari Pikachu Poke plush, and there's a relaxing yeah. Pikachu plush. The one I need to find out because I remembered uh, when I went to Anime uh, Midwest, like I found like uh, one of those uh, Raichu like like hugging like well, they say it creates like a heart, and then he was uh -huh. and then the guy was telling me like there was supposed to be a Pikachu too that like that goes together like to like so when you put the Pokemon together it makes they make a heart. But yeah, then he didn't have the Pikachu, so then I, so I just got the Raichu, and then I was like, if I go to um to, to uh, New York, I hope they hope they probably have the other the other half that I could like oh, that I could put it together. I could put it together, yeah. Because yeah. he was trying to sell me both, and but he didn't. Ha they didn't have they didn't have the Pikachu. They they sold it, so I was like, yeah, so it was sold out. So I was like, I was like, yeah, so I was like, I'll take the Raichu. Wait, <laughs> the giant Pikachu is a hundred dollars. Hmm. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Five to nine business days, so hmm. All right. Um. Yeah. What were we talking about? <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't want to ever hear about any so, addiction problems oh, I have so yeah, ever again. Yeah. Play. Yeah. So play Masters of. Oh, they got it's wedding Pikachu. Do they? Yeah. Oh. SDS, SDS is it? Play. Play. You. You. You guys. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't. If you haven't. If you haven't played it lately, open it up. Download it. It's free. Go grab your bonuses. Go play the oh, events. Free. Yes. Yes, exactly. They got a life-size sheep. I love it. Okay, I'm going to yeah. close this before I start. Well, yeah. actually, dude, I, I don't think they have the uh, the Halloween things available yet, do they? No, probably not. That's because no, probably. probably next month. Next month, yeah. All right. Chat. Chat. Here we go. I need you all to do me a solid. Whenever that shit goes live... Let me know right away. I am buying so him, many yeah. of those right then and there. Just saying. Because mm. I need that hoodie. Here, I'll show. I'll post the hoodie image here on the Discord chat so you guys can see it for yourselves here, what it mm. looks like. And it's so Oh, that's cool. KG. It's oh, like that's it's, definitely it's, KG. It's perfect for moi right here. I love Aww. it. It's, it's, so basically it's, what you're telling me uh, is that like when the store goes like out of stock, I know why. <laughs> you bought all of it. <laughs> I bought that. I no, because like the whole thing. He's, gonna, he's like, gonna buy no, he's gonna buy as many he's gonna buy as many of those hoodies as he does in Nintendo Switches. Yeah, right? Hey, listen, man. I have triple digits of switches. I don't need to hear any of that. So if my switch breaks, I have a extra, but I gotta figure out how to back that shit up. I haven't learned that yet. But you know what's the thing though? You know what's the switches worst thing about this Halloween event? Yeah. So you guys know how much I love foxes. Yeah. The three main foxes are in uh -oh. this goddamn event. There is Zarua, there is Finnegan, and there is Vulpix. All three of uh -oh. them right there together. And for our buddy Drift, there's even a Drift Loom over there too as hey. well. But all three of the foxes are here, okay? What does that mean? That means there are keychains for all the foxes. 
That means there's hoodies for the foxes, like for the Zorua uh-huh. one. There is a uh, Pikachu pumpkin mug, apparently. What the hell? <laughs> There are, there are more keychains focused on the foxes. I'll, I'll post these here. I think you you guys will like it. I'll post it in the Discord uh, chat for you guys so you can see it in general. Yeah. They, they look adorable as hell, bro. I love them. There are these additional keychains right there. Um, they got the plush badge. Assuming those are pins. They, they mm. got so many things. Actually, you know what? Let, mm. uh, screw that. Let me just show you the collection. The collection is well, right here. This whole thing. Bro. So essentially, so essentially uh, KG's wallet will be saying pain peckle. Pain pickle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, you know what's the worst part? This shit's happening during ANYC, so it's like, where's all my money Yeah, for? let's go. Where did <laughs> ANYC money go? Oh, it went all this. Uh, God. God. Yeah. God, yeah. Now, now, you're, now, you're gonna, now you're gonna have to eat the pizza in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Terrell, bro. Why did he buy the pizza package hotel? That should have me in tears. It says authentic New York cuisine pizza, bro. Or yeah, what? the authentic New York pizza. Yeah, fucking two brothers around the corner. <laughs> pizza. I, the mean, fuck I, I mean, if you wanted the authentic 99 cents experience, probably. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey at, le- hey, at least two brothers is actually decent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, you get something rather than nothing, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, oh my god, they got pins for them too. Fuck, no. Uh-oh. There are oh, there pins for them too. Oh, yeah, god. exactly. Some of the uh, Halloween merchandise is often released through the international online Pokemon Center websites, but if you want to guarantee getting a certain item or live outside of the US slash CA slash UK, you can buy through Mecha JP, although stock goes fast. Yep. Uh, I so I gotta, I gotta know when this shit goes live. I need every one of you supports chat. Y'all gotta help me out with this one. Yay. Please. I'm- this is so I've never asked anything from you guys except for liking and subscribing and following and uh donating and whatever the oh hell you got. <laughs> <laughs> but I never ask you guys for anything though. I'm just simply that. asking you guys to at me the moment this goes live, bro. I need to be there on the ready. Got my Apple shit ready to go. I'm going to buy it immediately, and I'm going to probably cry about it for the next couple days. Please add them on Twitter at KG Prestige. Exactly. But, uh, know. yeah, that hoodie, though, that hoodie. I, I noticed yeah. that they only made a Zarua hoodie. Nothing else. No other hoodies. Just a Zarua hoodie. Yeah. Like they, they know you. what they're yeah. going for with this one here. Mm-hmm. They they have all three foxes. They have Zorua hoodies. They got my boy Zorua dressed up as a pirate. Yes, please. My my Fennekin's a, a witch, and I well, what's my uh, what's my Vulpix again exactly? It looks like a magician, I think. Yeah, it's a fucking, it's a fruity magician. <laughs> Feeling yeah. kind of fruity today. <laughs> yeah. Nice. But uh, I yeah, I mean, once again, this this looks great. I I love it. I I love it. I love it. Oh man. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I can rely on you guys, the to help me out with this one. So make sure to at me on Twitter or at me on Discord. Let me know when it goes live. And I will do my best to buy that shit right then. And I, I like how I like how the I like how the uh, the clip Donnie made in the URL. It's actually making a, a, a reference to Iramakun. No, no satisfaction. I uh, uh, party <laughs> time. Hey, oh, speaking of which, dude, did you hear the news about it for Iramakun's mm. third season? What's happening? So, uh, of course, uh, just to let everybody know, I know a lot of people are excited for what is it, Mop Cycle 100 season three. Uh, Wait. You know, the, the next season of My uh, Hero Academia, uh, Spy Family uh, Part 2. Like, there's so many good anime coming out later this season. But we cannot forget the true hidden gem in that collection, and that is Iramakun. Uh, so, yes. Welcome to Demon School, Iramakun is going to be having its third season air this fall. I believe it's going to be on October 8th is going to be when the new season drops. Uh, they okay. actually dropped the new poster uh, a while ago showing how the new event is going to be. But the biggest thing, though, that I think a lot of people might enjoy is the one who is going to be voicing uh, the character. Uh, you might not know this per- uh, this said character because I don't think you've caught up to the manga. Mm-hmm. Have you or have you read all mm-hmm. of it? Mm-mm. You have not. Okay, so there's a new character that's going to play a pivotal role in uh, Iruma's development. Uh, I won't really go too much into it. They only just give you the, right. the name of the character. Bachiko Barbados. 
who is going to be voiced by an actress known as Junko Takeuchi. And if you guys know who that is, well, you might know her for some of her more common roles, such as Naruto, as she plays the main character herself, Naruto Uzumaki. Or if you know the 1999 version of Hunter x Hunter, as she played Gon in that one as well. And just to throw you guys off uh, for a loop as well, she's also the voice for Gumball Watterson on The Amazing World of Gumball too. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, so, fucking Nar- so Naruto's in our fucking anime now. Oh my god though. So yeah, you could go take a look at her at her roles, but yeah, so she is uh she's voicing Naruto, I think, um huh. in this well, one, which is great. Well Barbados, Barbados. Barbados. Uh let me see what else is there. Uh no, I mean she voiced Naruto, it's, it's currently voicing Naruto, and now she will be voicing Bachiko Barbados uh in Idomakun season three. She is going to be playing a pivotal role in Iruma's development. As I've already read, you guys are not ready for what season three is going to hit you with if you saw the poster already you know shit is gonna be real uh i'll post it for you tss on the on the general so you can check it out for yourself that poster looks dope as hell i'm saying shit you guys aren't ready for this new season it it, once again i think people deserve to give irumakun a shot i learned through it from tss who kept talking about it uh and then i gave it a shot and i will tell you i made a smart choice with that one because that one was a fan favorite series it made me binge the entire manga series that has been available and also you know it pisses me off too that it's still not available for the west yet legally like to it it sucks because the anime is doing good the manga is doing good i think it's like fourth place right now in best-selling mangas in japan if i'm correct so how the hell is this not being reached out here to the west you know probably because it's too violent too violent oh jeez <laughs> we have we have have you not seen Kinokuniya's collection bro I'm pretty confident we have more shit well I mean you know my <laughs> is, is graphic too I mean to be fair there is one character in there who is uh oh god especially if you watch the second season you know what I'm referring to but like yeah. Jesus Christ uh but still I think it deserves to uh to come into this uh I I'm judging from the poster here I don't think we're going to get that other one that I wanted I think that's going to be saved for season four uh but I'm still excited for this one because this one is going Mm -hmm. to go insane i won't give the specifics just know you are in for a wild ride watch itamakun seasons one and two they are currently available give them a watch a jam to the opening songs because holy shit they're a bop uh yeah magical bob magical bobby length and uh bobby rinth and uh no no satisfaction god i love those songs but i I hope they come back they better come back yeah, Dot Pump, you gotta, <laughs> gotta do the fucking third season opening, otherwise you gotta continue the trilogy. Exactly, exactly, 100%. I, I would love for them to continue. I hope they continue, because they've been really what made me go and jump into the series to begin with. You know, for many people with anime, sometimes they tend to jump into a show not necessarily because of the plot or because of the characters or anything. Oftentimes, it's because of the fact that it's because of the singers and the opening or ending credits of the songs that hook you into and be like, okay, yeah. why did this person make this wonderful song for this particular anime? Let me give it a shot and give it a watch. So, yeah. Uh, so, Iromakun, once again, season three, coming this October. Give it a okay. watch. I'm telling you right now, that is going to be the sleeper hit of the season. Exactly. For sure. But I'll be watching it, so I ain't sleeping on this one right here. <laughs> yeah, indeed. You know what? Right. I know last time, TSS, we did technically do reviews of Iruma Kun season two yes. at a point. We should totally I think, follow I think we up gotta on do, that. Yeah, we got to do it. We yeah, gotta, we'll, we'll, we'll be, follow we're up on that. Doing it. Yeah, I yeah, love doing, doing it. it. It was fun talking with you about it. So uh, season three Iruma Kun reviews on the pod uh, when it begins airing. And if you guys yeah. would like for us to go even further, because I know uh, for Emmy, uh, yours personal one that i think you're hyped for is spy family season two correct yeah. so yeah. if you want to share your review on that when that drops this season that's also something you can do too yes i'm down nice Yay. So, yeah th- there's a lot of good anime coming out this season there, the chainsaw man my hero mob psycho yeah. iruma kun uh, spy excited. family I'm actually, like i'm actually excited for spy family spy family yeah. is gonna yeah. be another yeah. january nagatoro Oh yeah, and that next year is gonna be Hello. dope. There was another Oops. series that is also coming, uh, that I was excited for, which is like this whole gender swap anime that's been blowing oh. up on Twitter. It's about like, uh, I think what was it like the the older brother ends up drinking something that the sister made, but he didn't realize what it was. 
till he woke up as a little girl uh, this time around. And now he, it's not like he reincarnated or anything or no, it's just like the the mutation happened during her sleep. And mm-hmm. now she's like she now she's the younger sister of the two. And now she has to live as a girl throughout the journey. Uh, but shit gets stupid <laughs> as the show continues, though, in a funny way, though. I, I enjoyed the manga for what it is. Um is nothing, by the way, just, just to be clear, it's nothing lewd or ridiculous or anything. Uh, it's it's just a surprisingly wholesome slice of life with a weird mutation of a gender swap. Uh, but other than that, it, it's a really uh, cute series. Uh, so yeah, fingers crossed that that one ends up being good. It's coming out next year as well, so very excited for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, good good shit. Good shit coming out the these next coming months, years, and I hope people have a good time with it. So please, chat, let me know as well let me hear from you guys uh what are you guys looking forward to the most from uh anime from fall 2022 and beyond uh kg forgot bleach no i didn't forget about clorox uh, at all whatsoever buddy it's just that personally (laughs) i've read the manga i know what it is the honestly i'm gonna be real with you the only thing i'm excited for with that season is probably just the music ost when it drops i'll be real with you uh and also, the, the weird stuff with Disney Plus is also going to be funny, too, to kind of keep following up on that one. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, that's pretty much all we can say on that. Uh, if there's any last things as well uh, to talk mm-hmm. about. Once again, I mentioned this before. Let's let's go into this real quick before we get into the mini review for the, uh, for the movie. Uh, so, HBO Max. You guys already know what I talked about this before. Uh, HBO Max has gone through a very... Very, very weird decision making lately. If you guys have been following the whole HBO scandal, well, it's not really a scandal, but it's just more so a news. Uh, there's been a merge that happened recently with HBO Max, um, where they merged with, I think it was Discover, if I'm Discovery. correct. Discovery. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Discovery Plus. So HBO Max and Discovery Plus became a merge. And what the heck are the dogs doing outside? What the dog doing? What, what the dog <laughs> doing? What the dog no, doing? No. Uh, but point is, uh, yeah, they merged and now what is going on is that they're taking out a lot of content to the point that like infinity train got removed from HBO max. It's got removed from, uh, YouTube's channels or Twitter accounts tied to cards network or anything like that. Uncle grandpa got completely scrapped and removed except for one episode. If you guys want to know about the story behind that one, that shit was hilarious. Um, A bunch of other shows that were in pre-production got canceled. A bunch of movies that were being in development got axed. Uh, Like the Batgirl thing that was going to be made. Uh, Apparently that was almost in finalization because they were doing the final stuff. And then it got completely removed and canceled. So the people who worked on the film just never got a chance to release it at all whatsoever. Which is very unfortunate to see. Um... A bunch of TV shows that were renewed for a new season, those got canceled. So if you guys were excited to see any more shows, uh, those got canceled. I think the Gumball movie that was supposedly going to come to HBO Max, that's no longer coming to HBO Max as well. Bro. Uh, There's a bunch, and I mean a bunch of things happening with that. And it doesn't get any better. It does not. It just continues to escalate even more and more. Um and now, like I stated before, a lot of animation, and I mean it, a lot of animation. If you guys were big fans of it uh, on HBO Max, those are disappearing from that platform. Well, not everything, but like a vast amount of them. Like I stated uh, with Uncle Grandpa, with Infinity Train. I think there was like the Aquaman series as well. Uh, These are just disappearing or being canceled or any of that stuff. And it's just horrifying to see. Um, But... I want to talk a little bit real quick about the Uncle Grandpa shit because this shit had me in tears. So Uncle Grandpa was also being removed from the program, right? Mm -hmm. And then for some odd reason, for no unexplained reason, on the Cartoon Network section, uh, it says here HBO Max has just purged the shows announced for removal this week. However, on the Cartoon Network section, everything announced for removal was pulled Except they forgot one episode of Uncle Grandpa. And that one episode made Twitter trend like crazy because you wouldn't believe what the name of that episode was that they left on HBO Max. And I I know it's probably a coincidence, but that shit had me in tears. The, f- the one episode that didn't get removed that was still there on HBO Max is one that is called, and I kid you not, please help me. What? what? The name of the episode for Uncle Grandpa that stayed there was 
please help me. And that was the only episode that got, that stayed there until it got completely removed from HBO Max. It almost sounded like for a second, oh it was like a cry for help. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Uncle Grandpa eventually at a later point gets removed from uh from twi- uh from HBO Max. So that one uh, that one episode <laughs> got removed. However, Uncle Grandpa is still stuck on HBO Max because if you guys know Steven Universe, you will know that there was one episode when they did a collaboration between Steven Universe and Uncle Grandpa. And that therefore he's still alive on HBO Max, so he's still there. So he's still kicking ass. And it is <laughs> hilarious to me. That that one is still the only Uncle Grandpa content that you could get from that. Aside from like the cameo on Gumball. So people on Twitter. People on Twitter have been just doing shit like this. I'll post this in general. But I'll also post this here. On the the Twitch chat. Because y'all need to see this shit. This shit had me in tears when I saw this. They made like the World of Light thing. But with Uncle Grandpa. Oh my god. Because he's the last man standing. (laughs) Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that shit had me in tears, bro. Oh, my God. I'm so saddened by this. Uncle Grandpa's a great show. I think people deserve to watch more of it. But, like, I, I wish I could tell you where you could watch it. But, like, I don't know anymore. And this, and this, and this, and this ends up, uh, this ends up, uh, this ends up being a very, quite, a, a quite an interesting lesson where we live in a society now. We live in a society. Um, where <laughs> God, I sorry, it took a second to realize what you I, were. I know, I know. <laughs> um, where you have all of these different content providers, and now you have all you know, the content that you take for granted is now gone. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. like we don't own it's like again, it, it really and, and actually, um, this is kind of spurring the physical media movement again. Because you think about it, um, CD sales have gone up. They have been—they're making fucking audio cassette tapes again. Like what the fuck? Wow. Um, vinyls, and and now I think we're going to see a renaissance of more physical media like Blu-rays and DVDs now. Especially with shit like this happening, this is like a yeah. wake-up call for the people. You know, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because you basically we've become in like a tra- draconian thing where it's like oh. It's like, oh, you know, on paper it looks great. Oh, yeah, you pay a monthly fee and you get access to all these shows and, and movies. Like, well, they can just disappear when they lose the license or they just they just decide, feel okay, like removing time it. out. Yeah, They're like bye. Like we don't want, yeah, we don't want to pay royalties anymore. So fuck you. Pretty much, and that's yeah. what's no, sad but no, too. No, not VHS tapes, more Knox. We're talking about audio cassettes. Guys, remember that. No, oh. <laughs> I, remember I remember those. Sure. Yeah, audio. Yeah, audio cassettes, compact cassettes. So yeah, yeah. The the merge has done nothing for this series. Like, uh, for example, Scoob. Remember that movie, the first one? Mm-hmm. There was apparently a sequel in development, and that got axed. Uh, Batgirl, like I mentioned before, got axed. Little Ellen, which was supposed to get a season three, never is gonna see the light of day. Chad, season two, never gonna see the light of day, and just a bunch of other shit that's just now gonna be completely removed. And uh, the merge will happen in summer of twenty twenty three. Um. Hmm. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting to keep an eye on and see what's going to happen as the thing moves forward. Uh, but right now, it's just very, very unfortunate. You want to know how bad it is? Why are you, you know, I didn't bring this up, but you want to know how bad it is? How really horrifying it is? Um, so, this shit had me concerned because HBO Max bought these uh, folks. So HBO Max removes about 200 Sesame Street episodes from HBO Max. What? 200 episodes of the series. For no odd reason whatsoever, you all decided to mess with our animation and you decide to touch our films and you decide to go after our shows. (laughs) But the moment you decide to touch our streets, that's when we cross the line right and, there. And you know, and you know what's fucking crazy? The fact that, that they had to spend money 
transferring those freaking two inch quadruplex uh, quadruplex tapes and fucking like dat master like uh, fucking um be- to like Betamax and shit, and now they're just removing it. So basically, what you've done is you've you've preserved them, but then you got rid of them. So that's a waste of money. Yeah, here, let me read this real quick. Uh, brought to you by the letters G O N E. Wow, that's a f- wow, oh, what a powerful God. statement. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, I didn't even get it. <laughs> Damn. Damn. The content purge on HBO Max continues as the streaming platform has pulled about 200 older episodes of classic kid shows Sesame Street. The removal of the Sesame Street episodes and other recent content by HBO Max appears to be part of a new owner Warner Brothers Discovery's belt tightening moves aimed at reducing streaming content payment obligations. As of Friday, HBO Max listed 456 total episodes of Sesame Street with a selection from season 1, 5, and 7 and a full lineup from the more recent seasons 32 to f- 39 to 52. Of those, only 29 are from the earliest seasons. Previously, the streaming service offered about 650 total Sesame Street episodes, including episodes from season 2 to 4, season 6, and those from every season between 8 and 35. So thanks to all of this, they are now completely gone. Completely removed from HBO Max, 200 episodes. It was so weird that even... This is true. Sesame Street came out and tweeted about this. And I love this because this is actually pretty amazing. This is some really good news. If you guys want good news, this is some good news. Your friends on Sesame Street will always be here when you need them. Visit the neighborhood any day of the week with full episodes on our YouTube uh, channel. So they are putting full episodes, complete, free episodes for you guys to watch on the YouTube platform. I'm just hoping that it would be classic seasons. I would love to. I I want. I what I want to do is I want to watch the episode that has um, what is it um. Oh God! Sorry, fucking brain just decided to like, like oh yeah, it's like it's like oh yeah. Um, hold on a second. I will love the Rocco ones. I need to see that in 4K. Yeah, but it's it's the it's the uh, it's the episode with Stevie Wonder from 1972, oh, where he where he cool. plays where he plays where he plays Superstition live. That's like that's like fucking like seven minutes long. I want I want to watch that episode in full from 1972. I and uh, oh yeah, and I think I oh yeah, I did watch that. I guess that mysterious episode that was pulled at the time. The, yeah, the, the Wicked Witch of the West the because, Witch, that's, yeah. because that's because that's because that's uh, you know that's that's technically like uh, public domain because well at this point it, well not public mm-hmm. domain but it's like it's unavailable. Yeah, because it's the Wicked Witch of the West. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, what Sesame Street replied was like, "The letter of the day is S." <laughs> screw you, HBO. <laughs> what? Uh, the, the I don't get it. No, 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 the, the, the letter of the day is S, but it's for she. She. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I actually don't understand what's up with the purging all of a sudden with all these yeah, shows. They don't. Uh, they don't want to pay the licensing. They they just they just said it in the in the. Uh, yeah, they do, do not want to. They do not want to pay for any of the content creators, so they're removing wow. them from the platform. So that way, none of them will get paid whatsoever. Uh, all of the films that got canceled, they're doing that to save money for when the tax thing comes in. I think of what it was. Oh, that's so um, stupid. Yeah, they're, 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 the there's a lot of business moves happening right now uh, behind the scenes, wow. and unfortunately, these business moves, while they might be good on their front is not mm-hmm. necessarily good to those who are wanting to see these contents well, or these shows. Do you know you know that causes that causes that that causes what they call in the cable industry massive churn. Mm-hmm. And churn is when you quit the subscription. Yeah. Just like I did with Netflix. Just like what just like what I did when I quit Netflix because fuck them. <laughs> Um, I, know. But I, think, yes. I think HBO Max, so I'm not paying anything at anyways either. It's like a show. well, yeah. I mean, I mean, technically, technically, I have a grandfather Verizon package, so that means mm-hmm. I get eight. Since I have an HBO customer, I get HBO Max for free. Mm. But this is this is making me sad. It doesn't exist in Canada, so I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's like, geez, it's like, oh, they care about the money. Here comes yeah, the money. Well, Here comes the yeah, money. but when they do that, people are not going to want to pay for money, it. Money, so money. Like, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, way. yeah, it's, they don't we, care. Need, we need we need to bring we need to bring uh, Shane McMahon so he could freaking uh, do an elbow drop off a fucking ladder onto Discovery and fucking say, "Here, give me my fucking things back." <laughs> Low key though, they're kind of doing something with Disney Plus where I think they're releasing a version with ads, so it'll be yeah. cheaper. Yeah, so and then they're raising like, Disney so, Plus. Up, yeah, I think. so. Yeah, so that's the so they they're basically doing the the Hulu playbook. Uh, the hell, why? Is why? Oh, because <laughs> they, they want because they want money. No, no, I, I'm sorry. I was, <laughs> I was on Twitter. Money. I was just on Twitter for a second just to see what's going on. Apparently, Flatbush here in New York was trending for some odd reason. Okay. And then it says here, New York is really different. I was not expecting that at the end. It's just a woman twerking mm-hmm. on top of a car. And then the camera yeah. pans out, and then it just shows a naked dude on the sidelines in the street. <laughs> Why is this in the streets of New York, bro? Like this. Flat, yeah. Flatbushians, uh, <laughs> that's his name. It's, it's not normal, bro. <laughs> no, I mean, New York City in general is just not. But, like, we, we love everyone. Oh, God. It, it's hilarious. I, I am... Amazed. Flatbush is like the version of Florida, basically, for us in New York City, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. So, no. Nah, I love All much right. love to the Flatbush folks. Um, okay. But let's go so and now, uh, wrap things up, why don't we? Yeah, the, the mini review of Movie 5. Exactly. You got that, buddy. So, uh, yeah. Emmy, I'm going to pass this one on to you, buddy. Because yeah. I think you might know this better than anyone right now. Uh, at least uh, since you watched it as well on Friday. So I want to yeah. hear from you, your review on the latest Pokemon film, quote unquote latest, because it technically <laughs> released in theaters. So it works. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the film. Why don't we? Yeah. Pokemon the movie Heroes. Uh, what exactly is this film all about? Well, our buddies Ash, Misty, and Brock decide to go and head off to the city of Altomare where they have this nice little racing competition on the water. Uh, and throughout there, they learn about the legendary Pokemons of Latios and Latias. However, things don't go according to plan for them because what was meant to be a happy day now turns into a tragic day because of the fact that two thieves decide to show up and cause havoc in the city. And therefore, will Ash, Pikachu, and the gang be able to save the day? Well... Let's get into discussing with this one for tonight. So, Emmy, take it away, buddy. Yeah. I want to hear from you first. What do you have to say about the film in general? Well, I mean, like, watching it in sub for the first time was really cool. Um, so I can always appreciate that. Um, this little story in the beginning that <clears> got <throat> cut out from the dub was actually... I don't know why they did that. I don't know why they cut it out. Like, they... I felt like that was needed <laughs> just to understand what was going on. Um, I thought that was really cool. Um, music wise, uh, fantastic. And even like hearing like Secret Garden with like the lyrics, I think uh, that was really, really nice. The one thing I will say that like doesn't hit the same is just the opening because I'm sorry, I have a spe- special um, place in my heart for Master Quest and I feel like it hits different. The only thing is, I just wish that they had more lyrics because <laughs> afterwards we played the, um, the dub opening and I was like, oh. Uh, my heart. But like low key, it's like, oh, they should have added more lyrics. But the guitar carried, so it was okay. Yeah, the um, guitar carried for us. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think like rewatching this movie just visually, for its time, it's such a beautiful film. It's so pretty to look at. I love the scenery. I think out of like all the Pokemon movies that have come out, I think that's one of the strongest films in terms of scenery, just because it's based it's based off Venice. It's based off Italy. So you have like a lot of beautiful scenery already there. And then just seeing Ash and his friends in like that type in that world is just so pretty. Um KG and I were joking about like how much like technology there is in this movie. Um, but like you have like still the simple things like the boats that have no motors <laughs> that still exist. Um, so yeah, um, in terms of the plot itself, I still like think the plot is kind of still like all over the place. Um, the pacing is kind of like here and there where it's like it's slow at times, but then all of a sudden it picks up really fast. Um, but like it's it's something that I can really overlook just because again, like the scenery and like even like the interactions with like Ash and Ladias um, is like. <sighs> I feel like we haven't seen like a character this close to Ash. It like just like in the in the span of a film. Like they were so close and that they had such a bond. It was so nice. Oh, my heart, my heart. And and the music, of course. Uh, 
Oh, uh, the chase the girl. Oh, my favorite song. That's my ringtone. <laughs> so yeah, every time we thought I heard we were it. thinking two different things with this one, honestly, because I was thinking of um, Secret, Secret Garden, Garden, but you were thinking of one of the OST songs. Yeah, uh, I was thinking of Chase the Girl, which is my ringtone. So every time it played, I was like, is my phone ringing? <laughs> 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 um, but like, again, like, I just love the music and like the um, the theme it played is too. And I felt, oh, so good. So good. But I love it. Um, another thing I have to say for this movie as well is, uh, let me let me think. Oh, yeah. Like as KG's like putting the images. Yeah, Mario was in this movie. That was really cool. <laughs> 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 um in terms of the villains damn all right they they be cartwheeling out here and just like taking lives they took out so many pokemon's lives it's ridiculous they took out they took out yeah, mario they straight up showed the man getting killed bro he got mind <laughs> he crushed the <laughs> yeah, i think that's one of the scenes that got like taken out from the dub because i'm like yeah they removed murder like bruh <laughs> like well, come yeah, on murder, now. well quote unquote murder yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, like, uh, honestly, like, uh, I feel like overall, like, I I think the last time I watched this movie was when I did, like, a rewatch of all the Pokemon movies, like, back when I was in high school. So I'm rewatching this again. And also in Japanese, it's just like, I feel like it's a different experience altogether just because, well, you hear, like, the voice acting, the take on that, and then, like, the different music and also stuff that they cut out from the dub. And we don't get blue. We don't get the blue filter. So that was nice. It was nice seeing this uh this movie the way we were supposed to see it <laughs> um but other than that um i enjoyed it i i was very happy with it at the end um i thought it was a good movie like i said even though like the story and pacing is like kind of like here like all over the place i still think it's a good movie and it's it's definitely underrated 100 percent. i think there's a lot like this movie is definitely deserves more credit than it gets just because visually for its like for its time it looks amazing and even like the tech uh technology like kg and i were talking about um in this movie as well is really impressive <laughs> just because you wouldn't think like for example like the big machine that is kind of like the plot device i guess for the movie um that holds the orbs i guess and also loki destroys them as well has stairs built into it so you can get in and it's just like wow <laughs> they, they thought, thought of, of everything, everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> um but uh yeah i just I, I think i think it's a good movie i think in terms of like uh to read like chat as well like uh what Mornak said uh uh what's it called in terms of like the trio uh i mean they didn't really play much i feel like this is more of an ash movie because like misty and brock they really didn't do much here other than like send ash's pokemon when they were like all trapped because like the security system like went up but um and even um uh, even Ash's Pokemon too. Like I feel yeah, like it was, was just mainly Totodile, Pikachu, wasn't it? It was only to yeah, it was only Totodile in the beginning, and then just Pikachu. So like they're really, it was really mainly an Ash movie, which honestly I'm okay with, just because I feel like the bond between Ash and Latias just like carried the movie. So like you you saw like Ash was very much based on like trying to help and trying to like you know just be Ash, be the chosen one as he always is. So um, yeah, but uh, in terms of like a send off, uh. I don't really think so, to be honest. It it really is just an Ash movie. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Uh, it's an Ash and Latios movie, and and I'm just gonna talk about the ending too with the now kiss. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, it's cute. It's cute. That's what I'm gonna say. It's cute. I wish mm -hmm. Ash still had the like the drawing that she gave him because like that's so wholesome. Like oh. I wish, uh, like, yeah, you know, with the references, I would have loved it if the drawing poster was somewhere in the wall or, like, right there in the drawer. Exactly. That would have been so nice. Ugh, I wish that's, like, when I wish the movies were canon, but, like, unfortunately, it's not. Um, not all of them, specifically. Yeah, not all of them. But, like, um, yeah, in terms of in terms of that, like, I, I think it's still very cute. Um, and it, it means well. Like, and also because, like, I, I feel like it's not even out of left field just because you see this bond, like grow throughout the film like that's one of the like the main points of it and also it fits the theme as well so <laughs> it makes a lot of sense um but yeah overall I, I thought it was a good movie um are we giving it a rating or yeah no? of course yeah sure okay uh i would give it an 8.5 out of 10 for music though and like visually speaking a 10 out of 10 yeah oh absolutely wholeheartedly agree with fantastic you with it's beautifully so good, good. Also, yeah. if we're going to be talking about visuals, 
Once again, we got to talk about probably one of the best animated sequences in the Pokemon anime. And that's the moment when Ash is trying to figure out how to get in to, to follow the girl. So the yes. camera just like spins around him with the houses moving around while he's looking around too. That that okay. moment right there, that is probably one of the cleanest animation moments I think the Pokemon anime films has ever received. That sticks Fantastic. out. That sticks out beautifully. And I'm so happy it does because that's such a beautiful scene throughout. One of the best animated sequences right there. Uh, but yes. this movie has everything. It has some of the best and iconic songs. Like Chasing After Latios is an incredibly, uh, incredible song that's been used in the Pokemon oh TV God. series as well. And uh, has been used for like a couple of to-be-continued moments as well. I mean, for Ash versus Paul, if you guys remember that one, the Gliscor versus Drapion fight, that was used with that song. And, oh God, that yeah. moment of to-be-continued was mm, incredible. Uh, so... Another thing I have to also give praise to with the film is the uh, is the insert songs. I think the insert yes. songs carry well, specifically <laughs> Secret Garden carried one of the best moments in this film, and I I think this is something that really made me appreciate it more when uh, Coco brought it back, which was the uh, the concept of using insert songs to carry a film, and I really hope that with m more Pokemon movies coming out in the future, they bring that concept back with at least giving us maybe just one insert song if they would like. I think that's something that is plausible, no? I mean, it's Pokemon. Yeah. Why not, right? Why not? Exactly. Uh, so I would love for them to bring more insert songs. I think it just gives an additional life to a scene, you know? That's why Secret Guardian is probably one of my favorite Pokemon anime songs because it's just so, so out there. But it feels so right, you know? And the lyrics are beautiful. Uh, the melody of the song is just as incredible, too. And yeah, like Emmy said, the visuals and the uh, just the aesthetic and the feel and animation as well for this film is top notch. One of the best that the OS series has gotten. And I still, in my heart, believe this is one of the more underrated Pokemon films to exist uh, within Pokemon films. Uh, and I would give it a like if I had to give it a score, I'd probably give it around the same as Emmy, like an eight point five out of ten. It's really great. Yeah. You just watching it now, especially with all the additional content that we didn't watch in our initial run of it with the dub and all. Uh, this really did a good job in uh, in giving us a better look at the lore and story as to how they initially wrote it versus how we saw it via the dub. Uh, yeah. I will say, though, despite saying this, uh, the, the sequence with Master Quest will still never be topped in the dub. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love this is a Pokemon Master, but I think I've heard that so many times already throughout the series and years. Yeah, but the 2002 one with Cold Koba is, is a great version. Oh, no, 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 res no disrespect yeah, on that whatsoever. Like, especially compared to the TV version that we had at the time, uh, which was, I think, opening four, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't a big the fan white, of that. The white berry, yeah, the white berry one. one. I yeah. hate that one. Ugh. Like 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 I said, when you have a when you have a when you when you have a band that has a song called Pot, you don't want to you don't want to have them. <laughs> so they thought to get Lovely Boy for the next one in the future, though. Oh, <laughs> the, the sh yeah, don't oh, worry, we God, won't talk Tom, about that. Tommy cause... February 6th because we're going to be here for 6 hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raise enough points, it will make him listen to it for six hours. There you go. Nah, but um, want to lose one brain cell every two seconds? Jesus, that bad, huh? Yeah, I don't actually want to follow up with that question. I probably know for a fact what it is. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so I agree with Emmy wholeheartedly. It, it deserves an eight point five out of ten. Uh, it's a wonderful film throughout. Wonderful time to chat with the community as well and just see what people had to say about it in the chat box as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And I hope everybody had a fun time watching the film alongside with us, too. I think it was yeah. a nice experience to just go back to the past. And uh, I want to bring this up right now real quick. I don't care what any of you all say. That kiss is still the best ship moment in the Pokemon anime series for Ash. I'm sorry. I don't care who it was that did it. <laughs> that, that shit was incredible. Uh, 10 out of 10 sequence right there. I love that moment right there. It's mm, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful moment right there uh, mm -hmm. between Ash and which girl? I'm not sure. <laughs> I wonder. Makes you curious. Is it who you think it is or is it something else or someone else? Uh, I think yeah. we all know who it really is. But uh, yeah, I love the scene. I love the scene mm -hmm. throughout. So yeah, that's all I got to say on that. Uh, and that's pretty much it, really, to, for mm -hmm. the review. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Once again, uh, it did bring me uh, an introduction to realize some of the songs that were in this film. Uh, there was a song, I think, in the Kukui versus Ash battle when Kukui summons the giant totem to appear from under the ground. I was like wondering um, 
where that song came from. And I know it came from movie at 18 originally. But I know there was an original, original version of it. And I never knew about it until watching the film. And then I I see this one and it turns out, oh, shit, it's from this film. Once again, another point to the OST. Honestly, I think the heroes should be in, like, top five best OSTs for the franchise. 100%. Yes. Uh, with the Pokemon series. I don't know if others agree with me, but personally, that OST hits hard. With the insert songs, with the with the melodies, I think they're probably some of the best uh, rendition of Pokemon music we've ever gotten for the franchise. Mm-hmm. And that also might help with the fact that there were more uh, people working on this OST. Because I don't think it was just a collaboration by just uh, Miyazaki himself. I think other people were also in the OST as well, providing their songs into the mix too. Mm. Uh, so yeah, uh, just a well balanced, well versatile. And then and then uh, Madoka, who did Secret Garden, then did the final uh, DP ending. Oh, she was the one that did the uh, Kimin like Kimin uh, no it whatever it's called Kimin. Uh, no Kimin Kimin no Mune ni La La La. Yeah, she did that. Oh, one? Yes, really? she did that. Yes, she was oh. that. Wow, they look. Wow, yeah. more, more respect. Okay. Wait, I, hope, I swear okay. to God, I hope that version of the CD release when it dropped had the Secret Garden insert in there too. Please. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Uh, uh, damn. Boo. Now, uh, I do have to ask one thing though, TSS, as you might notice. Yeah, because yeah. I know artists tend to do re-releases of the songs. I know for like the uh, Chisaki Mono, um, yeah. the, that version of the song actually got like three different variations after its initial release. Uh, by any chance, did Secret Garden get any love in that regard? No. Or just no. only that? Well, I mean, to be fair, you can't touch perfection, I guess. <laughs> but uh, to those who know, if you guys follow Chisaki Mono, uh, that song has got like three different variations. It's the initial release. Yeah, there's the, the, there's, there's, the, there's the single release, there's the movie version, and then there's the English version. The English-Japanese version. Hmm. Which is called Make a Wish. So yeah, it's, it's great stuff all around. So uh, wonderful film. So that's all we got to say for the review on that. What do you guys say we go and uh, do our best to wrap things up for tonight? Yeah, let's do it. All right, then. So here's the thing. Normally, we always talk about the things that are going to happen throughout the week. But uh, we'll start with you, TSS, because I'm not sure if your schedule is changing okay. anytime this soon. So yes. let me pass so, it to you. Um, so yeah, um, so how we're going to do this is I'm going to be doing some extra streams because since... Uh, Tyrone is gone, and since Terrell is going to be gone, I'm going to try to do some extra streams. Um, so um, let's do this. Uh, tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern, um, we are going to be going into uh, another episode of Final Fantasy VIII. Um, we are right now at Darjing, uh, uh, Darling, uh, Dealing, sorry, Dealing, and about ready to do the assassination. I decided to play that because uh, because because Final Fantasy VIII, I could chill out and talk with you guys and then um wednesday uh, me and terrell are going to be doing something we're not sure what we're going to be doing because terrell has no games to play but i will be with him and we're going to play a one-off game because this is going to be one of his last streams before he he goes away yes uh and then on and then uh for me on friday um it's going to be Tales of Vesperia. Hopefully, hopefully this week we're going to do Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition 9 p.m. Eastern. And then hopefully Saturday, if I don't have anything, uh, if I don't have any personal stuff uh, like coming up, it's going to be uh, Returnal Bound Redux, the Earthbound mod at 4 Eastern on Saturday. Um, and maybe Sunday um, ETS2 drive time or Euro Truck Simulated 2. I have to see how my schedule is. But um, like I said, the next cup, the next few weeks are going to be a weird schedule because I got, I'm going to try to pick up the slack uh, since Tyrone and uh, Terrell won't be streaming. Alrighty, thank you for your info on that. So make sure to follow TSS over on his Twitch to be notified whenever he does go live, or you can check him out on the TSS sub over on the Champion Worlds Discord server to also know and get notified when he does go live. So make sure to check that out. All right, for me throughout the week, uh, I need to follow up, and I'm curious about this as well, Emmy, because uh, I'm pretty confident yeah. they were wanting to talk to you about it too, and I don't know if they did, Emmy. Um, so. I was going to ask Cosmic and Joker if they're both currently right now on um, on the chat. Because I remember these two asked oh. uh, for a Pummel Party stream. Huh? Uh, so I I have Pummel Party. 
And, I do too. Uh, thanks to watching their stream of playing it on, on the Discord server. <laughs> So I was going to say we could do a pummel party stream because you guys recommended it the other week. So uh, pummel yes. party is basically what if you play Mario Party, and it, it's it's as brutal as you think it would be. You're just nuts and wacko and crazy shenanigans. So uh, pummel party is looking to be that chaos chaotic game. I didn't look into any details about it. I made sure to stay away from it. Only so that way I can jump into it completely blind and try to see how I do with the game. So, Pummel Party will probably play tomorrow, but I do want to follow up with Joker and Cosmic, see what they have to say about that. Hopefully, they give me their approval. I see Cosmic here saying yes. Said, yeah. Um, <laughs> and Emmy, you should totally join us there. I don't know if you have Pummel Party or not. Uh, I do. Yeah, you yeah. do? Yeah, Cosmic uh, gifted it to me, actually. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, then join us. Uh, join yeah, for Party Pummel Party. Let's go for it. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be great. Uh, so Wednesday uh, is going to be a Xenoblade Chronicles 3. The reason why it's going to be on Wednesday instead of Saturday is because Saturday uh, we're going to be doing something instead, I mean, with, uh, with streaming this week. Uh, yeah. Given the announcement we had a while ago on the Discord server regarding the, um, the showdown tournament. If I'm correct, it's going to be on Saturday, August 27th at roughly 2 p.m. EST. Yes. So we're going to be doing a stream focusing on the showdown events. And uh, we're going to be just highlighting some of the stuff that's happening right there on stream before we then go into uh, other stuff later in the, in, in the day. But uh, that one is going to be for showdown. So on... Um, on Wednesday, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, we're going to be doing a prelude to the final chapter. So we're going to be setting things up, getting our equipment cleared up and all that stuff done so we can then get into the finale of the game i think we're approaching it although i don't know if i'll complete it by then or not but i know that chapter seven is supposedly the last chapter um thursday i think terrell said that that's going to also be one of his last streams too throughout this week right uh yeah. so thursday is going to be the tripod um and, of course, now with Tyrone, it's going to be a duo pod. We need to also get another member for that one. I'm assuming, TSS, if you can, you can join us for that. If you have time, of course, if you can't, uh, uh, do not worry. Oh, what time? What time? What what time is that? 10 o'clock, right? Yeah, it's usually either 9 or 10. Usually, we, well, we fall in either yeah, time. Uh, yeah, um, I should be around. I got to yeah. see. I got to see what's going on. But Yeah, keep fine. us up to date. If you cannot, that's perfectly fine. We can always uh, get a buddy from the uh, Champion Worlds or ask Emmy once again if she's available for that, too, for that one. Yeah. Uh, so don't worry. We'll, we'll figure things out uh, for that if it's not possible, of course. But keep us up to date, TSS. And yes, then on we Friday, we got a reaction night. We're returning back to PM 2019. So... Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry. Uh, you guys sound so enthusiastic. I mean, just come on, we just watched movie. one of the best Journeys episode last week. What are you talking about? The Latios movie was great, bro. Uh, but yeah, so like, uh, yeah, this one's going to be interesting to see how things will play out for this week's episode. I think we're returning back to the Cynthia back lore story episode, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. And then, of course, on Monday, we'll come back to the re review of it uh, at that day. So please keep up to date with us here on Twitter uh, and on Twitch and on YouTube, of course, to notify yourselves when we go live and when we talk about these said things. So, yeah, it's going to be a fun week throughout. And then, of course, as I mentioned, Saturday is going to be, uh, going to be Pokemon Showdown. Mm -hmm. So hope you guys yes. look forward to that. Uh, so fun week throughout. Hope you guys join us tomorrow here, 9 p.m. EST, for Pummel Party. So hope to hear from you guys then and there for that one. And uh, what do you guys say? We go and call it a wrap then. Yeah. All yep. right then. So once again, everyone, thank you all for your love and support. Thank you all for being here tonight. Once again, massive thank you to my buddy Sergi for making this incredible art piece that you see right now on screen. Uh, he did an amazing job with this one, and I'm very grateful for it. And uh, hope you guys enjoy it as well. If you have yet to do so, make sure to follow the Pokepod World over on Twitter at the Pokepod World, and uh, that way you'll be notified whenever videos and stuff go live on the platform on YouTube as well. So make sure to follow the YouTube channel too. Uh, make sure to follow us in our respective places, whether it be here on Twitter or on Twitch or even on Instagram as well with Emmy anyway, with Treat Yourself. Uh, so Yay. make sure to go and check every single platform out. Uh, follow us if you can, and we will hear from you guys later in whatever video we make. However, before we go and wrap things up, TSS, what is the magical word we always have to say before we go and call it a wrap? Wash your fucking hands. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> What's with the sound effect in the background? <laughs> all right, then. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, thank you to all three here that are currently in the call. To Nessa, to Emmy, to TSS. Much appreciated from you three. Very really welcome. do uh, appreciate You're it. Welcome. So thank you. Uh, so, no problem. Yeah, tune in throughout the week, ladies and gents. We got a fun session ahead of us with all of us working on respective streams and whatever it may be. So uh, fun times throughout. We'll speak with you all later and uh, have yourselves an awesome week ahead of you. All right, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, Purell. Bye-bye.